All right, first and foremost, we give all praises, honor, and glory unto the Most High God, Yahweh. We do so in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world in recall Christ, Yahweh Shai. Uh, Shabbat Shalom, it's your brother, Chief Priest Alazar Ben Lawyer, aka the Gorilla Hebrew. Who am I joined by? Mr. Assad. Officer Assad Kabrab. So, um, yeah, um, as y'all know, matter of fact, let me, um, let me pull this up. Let's pull this up briefly. Give y'all a little background on this. Um, so, y'all a little background on this video before we get into it and give people a chance to get up in here. Um, okay. So, um, last week, last uh, so-called Saturday, we dropped a video called Woke Church Runs from Hebrew Israelites, uh, Pastor Eric Mason in parentheses. Okay, this past Monday, uh, we did a video on Woke Church Runs from Israelites live commentary. So we did a commentary on this through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemel Shai, which is beautiful and informative. Got a little backstory, a little bit more insight on the situation from Officer Assad, who was the brother speaking and dealing with Pastor Eric Mason in the video. Um, but before this video came out that we uploaded, I mean, of course, before the um, uh, the commentary video, of course, uh, Pastor Eric Mason took it upon himself to make a video in anticipation of the video that we put out. Because when we put this video out, it uh, it was on premiere. So y'all are familiar with how premiere is working. Premiered on a Saturday, a, a week after it happened. Um, some because there was a, a, a large group of people that he had brought across the street with him who also recorded parts of the discourse so um there were other videos that came out before um of course through the spirit of our video um you know got the most views in it because it has uh the moments before it and as well as after it in totality um so him in anticipation of this our version coming out um made a rant video on facebook so what we want to do is respond to this. And I mean, after this, I mean, between what happened here, the commentary we did on it, and then this, I mean, the woke church is pretty much done. That's right. Just, right. just to be totally honest with you, it's really nothing else um, to talk about. It, it, this this man is a doctor uh, in, in theology. Um, he's, I mean, in 20 years of of studying the Bible, allegedly, or studying theology, that's what I studying theology rather than the Bible. Um studying theology on a collegiate and scholastic level two decades and you know a, a dude that is as old as his career of studying confounded him um and you know that that is pride wounding um you know it, it hurt the man's pride and it's evident uh and we'll show it here on the video we're getting ready to do our reaction and, and we're going to dissect it through the spirit and then we're going to go into a very in-depth breakdown on a um grossly perverted christian concept uh, predicated upon one of Paul's writings. So we're going to go into all that through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Um, so I'm glad y'all are, are, are tuning in with us, um, you know, live. And those of y'all who are watching the playback after, you know, appreciate it. And I hope this will be edifying through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim and Mashiach Yahweh Shai unto you. Um, anything you'd like to say before we get started, officer? Kind. And um, <clears throat> through the spirit, it's, it's real powerful that, um, you know, this video did the numbers that it did because. Now, when you look up Woke Church on YouTube, this video is the number one thing that pops up. Oh, Lord, yeah, this is the number one thing that pops up. So when people uh, inquire as to what the Woke Church is, or they try to do some research on the Woke Church, what they're literally going to see, uh, the first thing that's going to pop up is the, the leader and the founder of the Woke Church. The water to Marissa Younger. Okay, I'll praise to that sister, the water. Um, the first thing they're going to see is their leader, literally getting through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shai, him getting just exposed in his really just base knowledge of the Bible. He's trying to go like we went into last week. We don't need to go into it again. But him acting like him going into the Greek or sorry, the Hebrew word for God, Elohim or Elohim in the real Hebrew is something like deep. So, um, you know, it's, it's yeah. they put that out. And it was was real quick. God, was there any full version of the video that they put out? Full no, version of, of no. your guys's interaction. Absolutely. So not. out of all the Christian videos, it didn't have it in full. No. OK. 
So that's this is that's just great. That's just great to understand. Um, okay. Before as we get started, you had another point. Out? And, and just to add on to that, because it's it's so funny, and the Christians, you know, you you come to learn just throughout life, not even being in the truth. You cannot be in the truth and see the Christians are some are the biggest hypocrites on the planet Earth. Right. Because throughout the video, and particularly um, towards the end of the, of the uh, uh, dialogue between me and him, he was emphasizing context and not taking things out of context. But for him to say that. And on the other hand, not post the full video, which he clearly has because there's multiple people recording that entire conversation for him not to post the whole video is literally taking the entire conversation out of context. <laughs> no, that, that that's that's such a um, a profound point. I, um, it, it, it's it's hilarious. Um, I don't want to spoil anything because we're going to get I want I want to watch y'all. I mean, number one, y'all saw this video. If you haven't seen this woke church video go watch it okay. um at least the first 15 minutes because that's where the moments leading up to the actual altercation and the whole you know um a uh, dialogue that was had between uh, Hassad and, and and Eric Mason um it's it's all there in, within that first 15 minutes and there's probably about 10 additional minutes after he ran off where Hassad Karab goes into further edification and speaking on things that this dude ran from um but if, if, if you watch it, I mean, y'all you'll, you'll, will see what it is, and, and it's hilarious. You'll see it in its full context. I don't, but like I said, I don't want to spoil it, but what you'll see, Salaki, here's my point, was the level of pride that he approached the camp with. He approached the camp oozing with pride. And now we're going to go into the rant video he did, clearly after his feathers were ruffled as a result of this dialogue or this discourse, and how much pride he has there and how stupid it's going to make him look and showing you that the most high Yahweh which name they laughed at. They're going to put some respect on it. That's right. That's the right. Most High Yahweh resists the proud. That's right. And this brother's being resisted by the Most High. But speak briefly, I'll be right back. Come And like the brother said, um, he came up to the camp in just with just extreme pride. And um, I just want to get a, a scripture. This is um, just one second. I want to get a scripture. And real quick to the brother. Um, Zane corrupts. We we answer questions at the at the end of the, at the end of the video. So um, just be patient. And we will answer your questions, okay? But I want to address something that Alzar just brought out: is how proud, how much pride that this brother Eric Mason, Eric Mason had. This is um, slot. Let me get this scripture, okay? This is Proverbs eleven and two: When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. There you go. And that's why the scriptures say that he revealed this truth unto babes. He hid it from the wise and prudent. Yeah, the guys who went to seminary, college. And got doctors and masters and bachelors in this information you guys don't understand the bible and if you guys did the bible wouldn't be true that's how matter of fact just get it in out of the mouth of babes because in order for the bible to be true guys like pastor eric mason guys like vocab malone guys like dr james white can't know the truth of the bible they can't if the bible is true that's how cold the bible is and all praises to you how about shimmy how was go ahead you want to hear, uh, this hey, is, hey, hey, shalom to Sergeant Yatab. I see you in the chat. Right, go ahead. Okay. This is Matthew 21 and 16. Uh huh. And said unto him, Here is this thou. Is, this is Christ. Yahweh Shai talking, right? What does he say? Read. Here is thou what these say. Uh huh. And Yahweh Shai saith unto them, Yea, have ye never read? Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou perfected praise. So if, if Yahweh Shai, who you call Christ, is correct, <laughs> you guys can't know the Bible. You you guys can't have the proper interpretation and understanding of what the Bible is about. Go ahead. This, this Matthew, okay. Matthew 11, 25. <laughs> At that time, Yahweh answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, mm -hmm. because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent. It's Eric Mason, Vocab Malone, James White. The truth of this Bible has been hidden from you. It, 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 in order for the words of Christ, the red letter to be true, you can't know the Bible <laughs> in truth. You can't know it. Yeah. You may know some of the historical things that were going on. You may have learned some words in the languages, even how James White boasts of his ability to speak in Hebrew and Greek. All oh, that's fine. This Bible, what it means, what it's talking about, its message cannot be known by you if it's true, because it says you can't know it. That's how cold this is in the spirit. So again, all praise to you. How about Shemiah was shy? Because he put it in the mouth of babe, right? As a brother, Hassan usually says, it's high school dropouts, right? Now, granted, everybody didn't drop out of high school. Um, you know who's in the truth, uh, uh, of course. I mean, brother Officer Hassan, he graduated from high school. 
Um, all the all the brothers on it that were at camp that day are high school graduates. I personally am, am not a high school graduate, though, for the record. But it's 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 the point of these people who are looked down on in society: young black men, Hispanic men, who you know a lot of us have criminal backgrounds, trouble past, and things of that nature. Um, and yet the Most High God revealed the truth of the Bible to us. That's how powerful that is. So all praises to Yahweh Hashem Mashiach Yahweh Shai for that. Um, what I want to do is, uh, you know what it is, Salak, so real quick. I think the blacklist, I think the blacklist, this this is, yeah. I think they already, the blacklist kicked in. You think the blacklist kicked yeah, in? Yeah, yeah, meaning they're not going to recommend mm. videos as much. Mm. That's, yeah, that's, uh, I'm not surprised. Um, so like, yeah, we're, um, but yeah, so we want to get into this without any further ado. Um, it's two in the morning, so. I mean, but usually it's, I mean, it, it, it's on the it's way Sunday, up, you know. but two, you know what I'm saying? Maybe we'll see. We'll see. We're just going to have to pay attention, but, uh, let's go here. All right. Good old Pastor Eric Mason. So I've got a few points in particular that I want to highlight in the video. Make sure this is all the way up. <sighs> oh, oh. Some believers have been called antinomianists, which means without law. But just a few, what you guys are, yeah, exactly. Means I just wanted to do this this quick video. So when we talk about this idea of did Jesus keep the law, Paul kept the law. It's just very, very simple when you look at that. Galatians chapter four talks about he was born under the law, so that he redeem us from the curse of the law. So, <laughs> uh, Pastor Eric Mason, you're a liar. Yeah. He said Galatians chapter four says. That Christ uh, came uh, made under the law to to, um, uh, to, to redeem us from the curse of the law. No, he just mixed two different scriptures into yeah. one. Yeah. Christians have a tendency of doing that, no, sure mixing do. scriptures, yeah. making a mixed cocktail out of the Bible to fit their uh, their doctrine. Huh. You got a point? Yeah, but remember in the video, what did he accuse me of? Adding to God's word. Yeah, well, he just did it. He just took two different things and made them one. Galatians 4, 4 to 5. Let's uh, go there. Read. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. Let's see what Galatians 4 is talking about. But, Pastor, read. Uh, but when the fullness of the time was come, uh -huh. God sent forth his son, uh -huh. made of a woman, uh -huh. made under the law. Made what? Under the law. Under the law, right, read. To redeem them that uh -huh. were under the law. To redeem them that were under the law, read. That we might receive the adoption of sons. Oh, that we might receive the what? The, the adoption of sons. What verse is that? This is verse four, uh, 5. Uh-huh, go ahead. Finish 5. That's it on 5. Okay, Romans 9 and 3 to 4. Okay. You're not talking about what's obvious here. You shouldn't have mentioned Galatians 4 because it said uh, he came to give those that were under the law the adoption of sons. We know who those who are under the law is now adoption. Read three to Romans four. nine and three. For I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ mm -hmm. for my brethren, mm -hmm. my kinsmen, mm -hmm. according to the flesh. Spiritual Israelites, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. The church, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Read on. Who are Israelites? There's no way around that, Pastor. Read to whom pertaineth the adoption. See that? So they may retain the, receive the adoption of sons. So this is only dealing with Israel. You shouldn't even mention Galatians four at all. Go ahead. To, to, uh, to whom pertain the adoption and the glory uh -huh. and the covenants uh -huh. and the giving of the law uh -huh. and the service of God uh -huh. and the promises. You see that? So now Galatians 3 and 13. Okay, Con, this is Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Because what he did was take Galatians 4 and 4 and Galatians 3 and 13 and try to make it one scripture, which it isn't. So now let's address the redemption of the curse of the law. Con, Read. This is Galatians 3 and 13. Uh -huh. It says... Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. Uh, he redeemed us from the curse of the law. Okay, read on. Being made a curse for us, uh -huh. for it is written, curses everyone that hangeth on a tree. Okay, so redeeming us from the curse of the law. Let's see what that's about. Deuteronomy 29 and 19. Okay. Let's see what that is. So, you all right? This is Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 19. Mm -hmm. It says, and it shall and it come to pass, when he heareth the words of this curse... That he blessed himself in his heart, mm -hmm. saying, 
I shall have peace, though I walk in the imagination of my heart. So the words of this curse, what curse? Let's deal with context now. Previous chapter, 28, read verse 15. Mm -hmm. Let's see contextually what is that curse. This is the curse of the law. What is it? Read. This is Deuteronomy 28 and 15. Uh -huh. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, mm -hmm. to observe to do all his commandments uh -huh. and his statutes, which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that all these curses uh -huh. shall come upon thee. So the curses of Deuteronomy 28 is the curse of the law that came. See, they take curse of the law. And they use that as if following the law and being held to the standard that you have to keep the law is a curse. It, apparently, it's a curse to not have sex with somebody else's wife. Right. It's a curse not to be a homosexual. It's a curse not to eat pork that puts worms in your damn brain, according to the Christians. No, the curse of the law is Deuteronomy 28. Again, we just proved that with Deuteronomy 29 and 19. Deuteronomy 28 and 15. Start at Deuteronomy 28 and 1 real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1. Uh-huh. It says, these be the words, that's like, this is Deuteronomy 28 and 1. It says, and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, uh -huh. so observe and to do all his commandments. Salakia. The point, I wanted to see if it said Israel or Salakia. The well, point is, oh, it's, it's going to say well, Israel? Well, Deuteronomy 1 and 1 says, these be the words. There you go. Boom. Get that's, 1 and 1. That's, that's like, getting, yeah. uh -huh, beautiful. Okay. Just to prove contextually, who's being told this? Who's being told if you don't do this, the curses are going to happen because this is who the curse of the law pertains to, the same people who are under the law. It says in four, he comes to redeem those who were, he was made under the law to redeem those who were under the law, right? Which are Israelites. So how are we then making that anyone else, right? Then in three, in 13, it says from the curse of the law, who had the curse of the law, those who broke it, who were given it, which are the Israelites. Go ahead, read that. Come on, this is Jeremy 101. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. Unto who? All Israel. The church. All Israel. There you go. Read. Uh, uh, on this side, Jordan, in the wilderness. Okay. So as we can see, the curse of the law is the same thing. Uh, uh, the same people who the curse of the law applies to is the same thing who are under the law. The same people. Israel. So you quoting that actually works totally against everything that you believe in. Because you don't believe that you have to be an Israelite in order to, for Christ to have died for you. So your whole doctrine was debunked with you basically quoting scriptures that you think works for you. It works against you, brother. Always. But the Bible will always work against the Christian. Always. That's right. Wait, 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 wait. That's nothing. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the next point. Uh, let's just keep going. Jesus was under the law, but he also showed that he was su um, superior to the law. He just said that Jesus showed that he was superior to the law. Here's what's interesting, right? We know Hamashiach Yahweh is also called the word of God. So if, if he is the word, how is he then superior to the word? That would be like saying he's superior to, to himself. himself. Exactly. That's oxymoronic. That what he just what you just said was an oxymoron. Just like when you said that that the law starts exegetically somewhere, that didn't even make any sense, right? But let's keep going. Hold Luke thirteen. Because you see him in the scriptures, um, you see him in the scriptures calling himself Lord of the Sabbath, eating on the Sabbath, and doing different things on the Sabbath. Where in again, y'all? This is a doctor. This man is in several seminary degrees. He's been leading groups of black people in a religious, you know, context for decades. And this man just said, we saw Jesus eating on the Sabbath as if there is a law in the Bible that says you can't eat on the Sabbath. That's stupidity. Right. But to address him making the asinine statement that Jesus was superior to the law. Luke 13, 14 to 17. This is kind of Luke chapter 13, verse 14. Mm -hmm. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation mm -hmm. because that Yahushai had healed on the Sabbath so day. So he was healing people on the Sabbath, right? Read. He said unto the people, there are six days in which men ought to work. Mm -hmm. In them, therefore, come and be healed mm -hmm. and not on the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. the, the Lord then answered him and said, thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? Mm hmm and ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom uh, whom Satan hath bound, lo, a daughter of Abraham. He, he, what he just showed was not that he was superior to the law, but that the Israelites are superior. You mean to me? I can't, I can't kill this Israelite woman, yes, right? Is an Israelite woman better than a better than, it's a better ox. than the ox? Huh. That's what he said. This is a daughter of of Abraham. 
you will let your ox eat and drink on the Sabbath, which is a form of work that you're not supposed to do, but it's good to do or else that animal could die. I'm healing this person. He's not showing he's superior to the Sabbath. Right. Read. Con, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these 18 years mm -hmm. be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. uh, read where? To, to 17. 17. And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed and all the people rejoiced. They were ashamed. They were ashamed. Why? Because they were cut. Now, they wouldn't be, if he would have just said he, he's superior to the Sabbath, there would have been another time where they attempted to stone him. Yeah. They were cut by, you know what, damn, we do do that on the Sabbath. And it's not wrong to do that on the Sabbath. Okay. It's right to do good on the Sabbath. And Yahweh Shai, he gives countless examples when he says the priests blaspheme the Sabbath and are blameless. Why? Because they're in there working, cooking, lighting fires, killing animals on the Sabbath day. But why? For the service of the Most High. Okay. So what he was doing was the service of the Most High as a priest after the order of Melchizedek. So he wasn't showing superiority to the Sabbath. He was showing why he has license to do those things. The same way that a man has license to go and feed his ox. The same way that a Levitical priest has license to go in that temple and light a fire and kill an animal. That's what he's showing. The same way that the Maccabees had license to go to war on the Sabbath or uh, suffer a sure defeat. The same way David had right to do what he did on it. He And he cites these things. Huh. So if he's superior, then we got to say the Maccabees are superior and David is superior and the priest is superior to the Sabbath. Huh. Because what he constantly does in many instances is show I'm not he's he's not saying he's any different than the other Israelites. When he when oh, you 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 say you're the son of God, well, we are the sons of God. What are you talking about? You see what I'm saying? So that was a clear other instance. So he never said he was superior to the Sabbath. And this nigga said from eating, eating. Where where does it? You, you, this is like like Creflo Dollar silly. And this is why it's our people have to flee out of these churches, man. That's right. Because this simple, these simple Negro pastors do not know this Bible. I don't care how long they've been teaching it. I don't care where they obtained a seminary degree from. They do not know this Bible. That's right. Like the brother said, Creflo Dollar talking about you couldn't even use the bathroom on the Sabbath. How stupid are y'all, man? What type of God would tell you, look, man, you can't even have a bowel movement or take a piss on the Sabbath? As if your, <laughs> as if the waste system of your body is just supposed to stop working for 24 hours. Right. That's stupidity. But go ahead. Kind of. Well, that's why the Most High in, uh, I believe it's Exodus 16, told us, why is, what is, what's a preparation day, Mr. Dr. Eric Mason, so that you, so you can eat what you're going to pre be prepared so, to eat on the Sabbath so you don't have to cook. But wait, I, he ate on the Sabbath. Like, come on, man. This is madness. And I got, uh, you wanted me to uh, read Luke, Luke 13. Yes, what I need I got a scripture too. Uh, what? Well, go ahead. Tell me. I won't get to this. this is First John chapter two verse six. Because uh -huh. he admitted that Christ kept the law. He that saith he abideth in him, which Christians say they abide in Christ, ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. That's right. So if he walked by keeping the law, and the commandments, then we should walk that same way. Period. Right. Um. Where we at? Okay. Let's go here. We'll play a good chunk of this keep the law it's, it's it's funny to me because i'm saying why would you say paul keep the law of course paul at times showed himself as <laughs> if he was keeping the law look at look at what um the scripture he showed himself as if he was keeping the law <laughs> you're stupid man <laughs> i mean he he kept it you can't show yourself as if you either keeping it or you're not you, you were better off to say well at that moment he was keeping it says real quick and I'm out here doing some late summer prep because I got a late day and, you know, some of the Hebrew Israelites have been hitting me up since the video came out. So I got love for y'all. So I ain't, you know, you can yell, you can, those, those who are like that, you can yell, you can curse. Like I got cursed that even in the video. Uh, he, he, you're hilarious. A liar. Uh, but he's a liar. He, he, he didn't get cursed out at all. I mean, anybody could go watch the video. Woke church runs from the Hebrew Israelites. Go watch it. See if he got cursed out. You guys, I don't know if y'all understand this or not. Number one, this brother would have been reprimanded if he would have cursed Eric Mason out in the video. We have a no cursing policy that we have enacted, right? Brothers get reprimanded, get punishments 
for cursing at people on the streets. Literally. So you think this brother was gonna go out there and curse you out? F you, you this, that. No, of course not. He wasn't gonna do that. He didn't have to do that. He didn't at all. He actually just utilized rudimentary scriptures to confound you. Very simply, right? Precept? Proverbs 6 and 16 mm -hmm. through 17. These six things the, the Lord Yahweh hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, which is what he came up with at camp. A lying tongue. So there's two there's two things that you do that God hates. How proud you are and that you're a liar. That's right. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. There you go. Um, Like a, like a soldier, Daniela, just said in the chat, feelings. So deep in my feelings. <laughs> like LMA said, this brother is deep in his feelings. But he he's clearly messed up about that interaction. No, he's, he's it's not. That 15 minutes that he talked to this officer who's less than half his age, it irks him so deeply that he's talking about it. He's making Facebook. But he's irked by it. Because he knows that he got got in the spirit, he knows. So um, let's keep, let's keep it going here. We're gonna go to uh, five thirty. Okay. So Paul will say in verse nineteen of First Corinthians nine, he'll say, "Although I am free from all and not any one slave, I have made myself a slave to everyone in order to win more people." So what's the context of this verse um, that he's talking about? Um, Oh, let's deal with the context. Get it. First Corinthians 19, I mean 9 rather, read 19 to 21. Uh, Go ahead. I know what you were going to say. Yeah, Go ahead. Yeah, say you it see now. that? You see everyone, I think everyone that's watching this right now, whether you're alive right now watching it or someone afterwards that sees this later, notice, and that's why everybody, I, I, I encourage you all to go watch the conversation that I had between uh, this me and this man. In the video, he he's harping on it, how I'm reading things out of context. Because you have to read the entire passage, the entire book, rather, to identify the context. Why isn't he? Why isn't he reading First Corinthians, the first chapter in the first verse, or at least why isn't he reading First Corinthians nine and one? Why is he starting at verse nineteen? If we have to come, and he isogetes because he only reads verse nineteen. He does not any other any read this whole thing. What we're gonna do is read nineteen to twenty one, and we're gonna take a look and analyze what Paul is actually saying versus what he is trying to make Paul say. Huh. So read nine, uh, 19 to 21, because what, huh. what he's trying to insinuate is that Paul pretends to keep the law when he's around the Israelites so he can win them, and he does it when he's around other people so he can win them, right? But read. Huh. This is 1 Corinthians 9 and 19. It says, For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, uh -huh. that I might gain the more. That's right, that I might gain more, right? Read. And unto the Jews, I became as a Jew. Mm -hmm. He was as a Jew amongst the Jews, read. That I might gain the Jews uh -huh. to them that are under the law uh -huh. as under the law. To them that are under the law as under the law, right? Now keep going. That I might gain them that are under the law. Uh huh. The brothers who were in Israel as under the law, right? Read. To them that are without law. Uh huh. To them that are without the law, right? Read. As without law. Uh -huh. As with as without the law. As without the law. Now watch this. Read. Being not without law but to God. Being not without law to God. You hear that? He said, I'm not without the law to God. Read. But under the law to Yahweh. But I am under the law. So he just says, I'm not without the law to God. I'm under the law to Hamashiach Yahweh. So I'm still under the law. But when I'm around brothers who are not familiar with the law, I act as they act. Does that mean I break the law? No. That still doesn't mean the same way. This we understand when you're a Hebrew Israelite in the spirit and power of Yahweh Shemiahu you understand what it is to do this and to become all things to all men. If you hitting the block, I see some brothers on the block who's doing and living in whatever context that they're living in, in the context that I used to live in, and in that way, then I'm going to meet them at that level and I'm going to relate to them at that level. And I'm not going to walk into the spot and order a ham and cheese sandwich to come and sit down and eat with y'all because y'all ordered ham and cheese, right? I'm not going if I if I walk up to some brothers and I, I'm trying to give them a little bit of this truth and they passing a damn blunt around. I'm not going to get in the damn cipher. So, oh yeah, yeah, pass me that. That's what you're insinuating that this means, Eric Mason. You do understand that, right? But when you analyze it at that level, it sounds ludicrous for it to mean that. So, no, of course it doesn't mean that. But you relate to brothers on whatever walk of life that they're coming from. So when he dealt with Jews in Israel, he's going into that Torah, he's going into the Tanakh, the prophets, and he's proving Hamashiach Yahawashai out of that. You see what I'm saying? And then, and then this is a great one. So, so Eric Mason, if he's trying to 
uh, uh, bring a sodomite to Christ? Does he act as a sodomite? Is he, does he become a homosexual at that moment so he can win a sodomite over to Christ? I mean, if, if I'm following your logic, that's what I'm doing. But no, he wouldn't. And you know he wouldn't. And you would say, no, he wouldn't become a sodomite to the sodomites. Eric Mason, why wouldn't he become a sodomite to the sodomites? Oh, because it's against the law. That's why he's not without the law to God. I might go around there and kick it with y'all. And, and again, going to the Jews of Israel, I'm going to go into the Torah. I'm going to go into the Tanakh. I'm going to prove Hamashiach, Yahushai. But if I'm with brothers who aren't familiar with that, I'm going to relate to them on a level that they are familiar with. This, that is essentially all that he is saying. But if we're not reading the context and analyzing it, he's still saying, I'm not without the law to God, but under the law to Hamashiach, Yahushai, then you're not going to get it. See, but you rip things out of context. But then when a scripture is being utilized to cut you in the same way, you say, oh, that's out of context. Christians are trained in this art. That's right. They eisegete scripture left and right. But as soon as someone else does it, they say, oh, you're taking that out of context. Well, then you do it. We both do it. So what's the point? Either we both are going to read the whole books to get our point across, or we both are going to continue in eisegeting. It's one of two things, right? But go ahead. Oh, that, that was it on, on that? Okay. All right. Let's go to the next point. So, too, if you was there, um, hit me up with some video so I can put some more video out. Why? Because they ain't put the whole video up. <laughs> because them, because them, um, them dudes are about to put out an edited video. One of You're a liar. Go, everybody can go watch the video. There is no point where he approaches and he's being dealt with that's edited. Not one point. You're a, but the thing is, here's how cold you are. He, he's really not a liar because he really didn't know. And this is the coldest thing about it. He didn't know. But give me Deuteronomy 17 and 13. Now, your video, the videos that the Christians put out are cut. They don't have the discourse in its entirety. Our video is the only video that, that shows what happened before you walked up. All that happened after you walked up and then after you ran off. Okay. Ours is the only one that does that. But we're going to put out an edited video. You're a liar. Uh, Deuteronomy 17 and 15. This is Deuteronomy 17 and 15. Deuteronomy 17 and 15? 17 and 13 is a lot. Okay. This is Deuteronomy 17 and 13. Uh -huh. And all the people shall hear and fear. Uh -huh. All the people should hear the law of God. That's why you, this is why you need it. You need that law. You don't understand. You need it, Eric Mason, and so do all blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. We need it because we should hear and fear the Most High. And what? Con, shall hear and fear uh -huh. and do no more presumptuously. You see that? You just spoke presumptuously. We should do no more presumptuously that save the Most High God. No more presumptuously. Con. But here you are doing presumptuously. Let's keep going. Would you have another precept? This is Proverbs 18 and 13. Uh -huh. He that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. Shame on you. Yeah. <laughs> another scripture proving how shameful you are, and you ought to be ashamed of yourself, my brother. So let's keep going because he's going to say some more madness. The little leader hit me up. See that? The little leader. You see that? He's hurt. <laughs> the little leader. He's trying to take the little slight at the brother. He's young. Yeah, he is young, but he's big. Number one, he's taller than you. He's a little leader. He's bigger than you, right, as far as height is concerned. So it's hilarious that you would call him the little leader. The little leader conf confounded you, man. Well, the little leader he, confounded the big leader. The can of the big leader. And guess what? He's not even, this brother's not the leader, right? So that's even the coldest part about it. This brother is an officer. You see what I'm saying? Which is a, a, a dignified thing, and his brother is knowledgeable, Um, and he destroyed you, showing you that the babes, you said the babes is confounding the wise, man. Let alone, you know, what I mean, brothers who are a little bit more seasoned, studying longer. Did you get this? Just showed the woke church ain't even worth entertaining no more. Officer aside, clean them niggas up in 15 minutes flat. You see what I'm saying? Let's keep going. They about to put out an edited video. You know, they always do some clown stuff. <laughs> how, how stupid are you, man? Shame on you, Negro. Yeah. Hey, hey, what is he called, brothers? Pickle-headed pickle Negroes, Negroes, you yeah. pickle-headed Negro. Yeah. You, tell you what's shameful is you making this this shameful video, this lies lie-filled video you know at Starbucks. You know they always do some clown stuff, right? I mean, <laughs> uh, the video is not edited. <laughs> clown stuff. The, the camps that are weird, you know, because again, I'm not locking. What's weird about us? 
Hebrew Israelites and as the same, but there are some ignorant ones out there. I mean, immature ones that just, they, they say keep the law and one of the laws is don't bear false witness, but they'll put videos out about people and it not be truth because it's edited up. But wow. Yeah, I mean, did we do that? Go watch our video and say we did that, Pastor Eric Mason, please. They're getting ready to put out an edited video. I don't know how in your mind you think that that situation went, but there was no need at any time to edit that video from our perspective because there was, if, if you're insinuating that we would need to edit it because there was a point where you made us look bad, there was no point where that occurred. No point. You're delusional, brother, yeah. but it's written that your delusion shall be true. Give me that, please. And you lied on us. We're talking about bearing false witness. You said the brother cursed you out. He didn't curse you out. You are a false witness, right? So read that. It's Isaiah 66 and 4. I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them mm -hmm. because when I called, none did answer. See that? You were called. You were familiar with Hebrew Israelite teachings. You didn't answer. Instead, you're following the ways of Christianity, which you admit that the white man has <laughs> used to oppress us, So, which is just totally oxymoronic. So with that being understood, your delusions have been chosen. You actually thought that you were somehow in charge or you, you had the upper hand in that diatribe, my brother. You were far from that. Um, it, it was pitiful, and it's pitiful. This video is even more pitiful and shameful, truthfully. Yeah, you know, he reminds me of, if anybody's seen Adrian Broner's last fight with Pacquiao, <laughs> remember how convinced he was that he won the fight? That's As that's, usual. That's him. That's you, Adrian Broner. Hey, you look like Broner's big brother. I, Come on, repent. Um, where we at? They encourage one another, whatever. So anyway. Okay, yeah, all right. Boom. So all right. Okay. Look back at the whole thing. I just put it out there. Um, but I asked him what is justified means. He didn't know what justification meant. You know uh, the declaration. Hey, another lie. He's a liar. Don't worry. He's he, so we, we call him and he just said they say keep the law, but then they bear false witness. And but he bore false witness uh, three times, really, if we count um saying that we were going to put an edited video out that we didn't do. So he, he's a, he's at three false witnesses right now. That's all right. He's a pathological liar. It's all right. Is that? <clears throat> Okay. Watch this. He he's outright lying. Watch this. Not being justified by words, but by faith, which I agree. But there's something that he's. He, I, I agree, right? To take into account. Like, but... Hold on, hold on. Just don't interrupt me, please, though, because I didn't interrupt you. So as we can see, he interrupted people, but the brother clearly said what justified was, and how we're justified. There's not even that wasn't. How one is justified wasn't even a point of contention between you. You guys tried to make it. You No, not you guys, rather. But you, Eric, you attempted to make it a point of contention, but it wasn't. So you didn't know what, how to even react when the brother said it. But then you had the nerve to days later go on alive and say the brother didn't know. He, he clearly answered it. What are you talking about? Go ahead. You got a point? No, no, please. Uh, no, no. It's, no. Brother, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not calling him out on social media. We already we already met face to face. So. Yeah, I mean, I already seen the nigga. You know, brother already seen him. It's over. But we just I just saw this. Uh, brothers made me aware of this, and it was just so laughable to me. I said, okay, we're gonna do this one more time, and that's just gonna be the kill shot. One, two, three. We that brother had the face to face. Then we did the breakdown to the face to face. Now we're doing this. So that's it. The woke church is through unless they want to run up on us. Right, right. Period. And it, 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 yeah, where's the Greek Matthew? Too? I forgot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Where's, where's the Greek, Greek Matthew Greek that you Matthew. said was in your pocket, you liar? Another lie. You're in, so, but see, this is why we need the law as so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. Right. So we stop doing stuff and behaving like this fool-ass nigga Eric Mason. Right. Let's just be. Let's just call it what it is, right. brother. You are you acting like a damn fool. Repent. It's plain and simple. Right? Uh. Where we at, man? Let's keep going. He, oh, he get ready to tell another lie. Watch this. The center is righteous. I said, that, you know, give me the meaning of um, uh, Romans five one. What does justification mean? Um, so he said, he said, give me the meaning of Romans five one. What does justification mean? Saying that aside, um, saying that he asked that. He never even said that. He never said, give me the meaning of 
Romans 5, 1, what does justification mean? Let's prove that now. All right. This is the fourth lie the brothers told. All right. And we're what? We're not 12 minutes through the video and he's lied four times already. This is sick. All right. So what we have 548. I believe. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. I got uh, I got some. <laughs> Go ahead. This is uh, because remember he added in Galatians four earlier. Uh huh. Uh, wow, I, I love the Bible. See, we love the Bible. That's why oh, we know crazy. It. Proverbs thirty five and six. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. Add thou not unto His words, <laughs> lest He reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Which is what you've been found. <laughs> this, this has happened. I'm trying to add to the word, Negro. You you know you done messed up, right? Uh. Where we at? Boom, 548 to 611. Okay, watch this. Let's see if he asks you to break down Romans 5 and 1 like he just said he did in the video. Don't use ethnicity as a mechanism for justification. What's justification? Romans 5 1 says we're justified by faith in Jesus Christ. Right. So are we justified by our ethnicity? Are we justified by grace alone, through faith alone, through Christ alone? He hasn't asked anything. What he's done is revert to a standard doctrine that's been beaten into his mind. And he's that's why he's spinning it out so fast. Right. It's regurgitation. He's not even thinking fully about what he's saying before he's saying it. He's just letting it all out. You see, understand what I'm saying? And with him doing that, he's not he doesn't even have he can't even get a breath. And you hear this fat nigga? <laughs> Hold on, so like it. He can't even get a breath and watch it. Don't use ethnicity as a mechanism for justification. What's justification? Romans 5 1 says we are justified by faith in Jesus Christ. Right. So are we justified? So at this point, this is where he goes into high gear. He can't even get a breath and watch. See that he, he can't even be, but brother, you got to work on your breathing, brother. Slow it down. <laughs> you haven't asked anything. Well, he said we're just, but Romans 5 and 1 says we're justified by faith through Jesus Christ through your house shut. I said, right. Yeah. Yes, I agree. So, That's so you what didn't the Bible ask says. him nothing. <laughs> and, and he didn't, you didn't have to ask him because when you said what you said, it was agreed with. It, 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 it says in Ephesians. Chapter, um, and then, get, then after that, get chapter one. Said, <laughs> no, now I get chapter one. Now I'm jumping around. This dude is every damn where. He doesn't know what to do. He's getting high. He's sweating. And it's cold outside. Eight, nine. It's in for by grace. Are you saved through faith? Not okay, so I agree with you. So never was it asked. You're telling him this. You're not asking anything. And he agrees. So there's not even, it's not even a point of contention. See this false narrative? It, it It's outrageous to me that. This grown black man at 45 years old who allegedly is a Bible believer would get on the Internet and lie about a conversation he had with a 20 year old. It is mind boggling to me, but it also isn't. And the reason why it isn't because the scripture we read, he's going to take the knowledge from the wise and give it to babes. And of course, you're you following the poor chop eating damn past the church. And you don't know a damn thing. I mean, that's what it boiled down to, really. Um. Where are we at, man? So it's, this is what is that line number five, yeah, fourth or fifth line, something like that, something wild like that. All right, let's um, someone keep count. Somebody please take count of the lies. All right, because we got to deal with these lies. Uh, we got to deal with the lies. Let's go now to thirteen to forty. And we're not even. We're not even. We're, we're just not even get, fifteen minutes. We're not even halfway into this thing. This thing of ours. This incredible. I got a scripture too. You got a scripture? Go ahead. Uh, this is Second Corinthians chapter eleven, verse. Um, oh, where should I start? I'll just get to. I'll just get to verse fourteen and fifteen. And no, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed <laughs> as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Oh, there you go. We're not surprised by you, <laughs> brother. You just you're you're you working for the special demon state. You working for that wicked one, man, and you need to repent, brother. So let's go. Uh... Okay, but he was keeping the law to fulfill it and abolish it. What is? What is? What... He just said Christ was keeping the law to fulfill and abolish it. He guys, he said abolish the law. The, I mean, he said it. He said it. Now watch this. Give me, matter of fact, we gonna we gonna pull up. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up the blue letter. Matter of fact, I don't. 
Uh, Hold on, I'm a, he he just said Christ is abolishing the law. He just said it, right. I, I'm I'm gonna pull it up on a, on a, in a blue letter, so everybody can see it real quick with the because I'm I'm going into the Greek. Let's take a look. Oh, no, where am I? Where am I? Boom. Okay, hold on. let's go here. Um, so oh yeah, Romans. <clears throat> okay, right. So he just said about he said Christ came to abolish the law. He just said it. Um, like a damn fool, right? New covenant and the law, and so what's up, Ronnie? And so what happens is. Is when they talk to Hebrew Israelites and they start saying that Jesus kept the law. Well, Jesus was born under the law. Of course, he was keeping the law. Okay, but he was keeping the law to fulfill it and abolish it. What is, what is, what is? Um, he just said he kept it to fulfill it and abolish it. He just said that, right? This is Romans three and thirty-one. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law, right? So let's go here to, um make void make void strong g 20 uh 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 oh, establish so like it where i'm at oh. make void 26 73 render idle you see that destroy do away abolish he said we don't abolish the law or make void or destroy it or do away with it he just said christ came to abolish the law right now watch this let's read Go to the Bible hub, Romans 3 and 31, right? Boom. Let's see it in the ISV. Do we then abolish the law by this faith? Of course not. Instead, we uphold the law, right? Next one. God's word translation. Are we abolishing Moses' teachings by this faith? That's unthinkable. Rather, we are supporting Moses' teachings. Hmm. Or the way more New Testament. Do we then, by means of this faith, abolish the law? No, indeed. We give the law a firm footing. You see that? This dude does not know what he's talking about. Now watch this. Uh, let's go to Matthew 5 and 17. Uh, uh, and these are in other translations, right? Uh, matter of fact, let's click on it. As we know it in the KJV. ISV, I think is what we Let me Let me get in the KJV real quick. Think not that I'm come to destroy the law. Or the prophets, I am not come to destroy, but fulfill, right? So we're going to do the same thing. Word search abolish. How many times abolish appears? Okay. Uh, in the NIV, do, you, do not think I am come to abolish the law of the prophets. I am come not to abolish. Don't understand. Uh, don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses. Uh, ESV, do not think I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I come not to abolish. Berean study Bible. Do not think I have come to abolish the law. <laughs> do not think I have come to abolish the law. Do not think I came to abolish the law. Do not think I came to <laughs> abolish the law. <laughs> do not think I've come to abolish the law. Do not think I came to abolish the law. See that? <laughs> Dude is out of his mind. Right? Out of his mind. But but here's where it gets really crazy. I hope y'all ready for when it gets really crazy. Right? Remember he just said. I just replayed it twice through the spirit so y'all can see it. He said he came to abolish the law, right? Now watch this. Watch this. Okay, Karen, that's a good question. Abolish means to destroy. He didn't destroy the law because it's the word of God. We still use it. So that would be, if we he would destroy the law, then we would just throw away the first five books of the Bible. <laughs> so wait, at 1340, no, no, so like it. Where was it at? Yeah, 1340 to 44, he abolished the law. But at 18 minutes, he didn't abolish the law no more. This dude has back double talked himself in less than five minutes. But I gotta take you serious? <clears throat> Madness. Go ahead. It's James 1 and 8. A double-minded man <laughs> is unstable in all his ways. I mean, you know, that that that's pretty clear. Oh yeah. Hypocrite, hypocrite, hypocrite. <laughs> oh man, this is great. Oh yeah, boom. 
This is Sirach 33 and 2. A wise man hateth not the law, but he that is an hypocrite therein is as a ship in a storm. It's yeah, all that's, over place. Yeah, that's why you hate the law, because you're a damn hypocrite. Right? You're like a ship in a damn storm. Right? So now let's go here. Uh, hold Matthew 22. For you will call unto freedom, brethren. Only do not turn your freedom into an opportunity for the flesh. So basically, he's letting us know that although we've been saved by grace and faith in Christ, that we can't just utilize that as an opportunity to wild out because there is law. What is our law? We do. Wait, so there, apparently there is law, right? Go ahead. The law. How do we keep the law? It says right here, for the whole law is fulfilled in one word in the statement. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now, next time an Israelite asks you that, ask you about, do, do you keep the law? Tell them yes. He said, tell him, yes, we, you do keep the law, right? You do keep it, right? Because he's saying, love your brother as yourself. Okay, great, cool. Uh, Matthew 22 and 38 to 40, please. Because it's Matthew chapter 22, verse 38. This is the first and greatest commandment. Uh huh. Uh, sorry. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Uh -huh. On these two commandments have hang all the law and prophets. So all the law and prophets hang on those two. Meaning they're based on those things, right? To further prove that that was 40? That was 40, Con. Okay, so let's go to Second John 1 and 6. Con, this is Second love John. Your brother, right? Okay, read. This is Second John 1 and 6. Uh -huh. And this is love. And and this is love. So what is loving your brother? Is it being emotional? Is it hugging them? No. This is love. The biblical definition of love, superseding any dictionary. This is love, the doctrinal definition. Read that we walk after his commandments. Ooh, we so uh, that we walk after his command, who is the his Yahweh the most high. We walk after his commandments. So, how do you love your brother by following the laws that tell you not to steal from him, not to kill him, not to covet anything that is his, not to have sex with his wife, not to uh, uh injure him in a way that is going to render him unable to work, etc. Huh. Those are the things that's how we huh. love our brother huh. so if you if we ask a christian and they say yes they do keep the law and they say oh because they love your brother guess what eric you didn't get them out of that bind or pickle because all we're going to do is take it right here and guess what they're back in the same place huh. you got to do it go ahead kind of says and this is love that we walk after his commandments this is the commandment that as you have heard from the beginning mm. you should walk in it what is that referring to deuteronomy 11 and 22 for if he shall diligently keep all these commandments which I command you to do them, to love Yahweh your God, to walk in all his ways, and to cleave unto him. So it's back to reference in the Torah. Period. Period. You're out of your damn mind. So I, I, so you cut again. But uh, let's, um, boom, perfect, all praises. Uh, right here, watch this. So if somebody say a prophecy is fulfilled, do I look for that prophecy again? Because the he said, no, if the prophecy is fulfilled, you don't look for the prophecy again. And he's using this to say the law is fulfilled so we don't look for the law anymore. Now, we're going to show through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemiah was shy, how retarded that is. He says, if a prophecy is fulfilled, you don't look for it again. Okay, let's follow your logic. Let's go to Isaiah 7 and let's start at 11. We're going to read 11 to 16. Matter of fact, read 14, then go to 11 and we're going to read through 16. Is Isaiah chapter 7, sorry, 11. Mm -hmm. is no, that, read 14 first. Okay, this is Isaiah 7 and 14. Uh -huh. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Uh -huh. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. Uh, a virgin shall conceive, right? Read. And bear a son, uh -huh. and shall call his name Emmanuel. Okay, so hold that. Matthew 1 and 21 to 23. That's a prophecy, right? That's a prophecy. That, a, that this is going to be a sign that a virgin was going to conceive. So that's a prophecy. You said if a prophecy is fulfilled, we don't look for it again, right? So read that Matthew 1, 22 to 23. This is Matthew chapter 1, verse 22. It uh -huh. says, now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, mm -hmm. which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, mm -hmm. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, mm -hmm. and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. So now it's saying that Yahweh Shai fulfilled that prophecy, who you call Christ, right? Here's the problem with your logic now. We shouldn't have looked or that shouldn't be quoted in the New Testament. You know why? Because Isaiah 7 and 14 was already fulfilled. Start at 11 now. Go to Isaiah 7. Start at 11. Read the 16. Isaiah 7 and 14 was already fulfilled. But then we look for it again and we see it in the New Testament in reference to Christ. So, again, if we follow your logic, there's a problem with Christ now. 
You see that? You see how problematic these niggas' logic is? How stupid it is? How much their words fight against them? How much they fall on their own swords? He's spiritually suicidal. 11 to 16, read. It's Isaiah chapter 7, verse uh, 11. It says, ask thee a sign of the Lord mm -hmm. thy God. So he's talking to King Ahaz. Ask a sign of God. Isaiah is talking to Ahaz. Read. Context. Uh, read. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. Uh -huh. But Ahaz said, I will not ask. Ahaz refuses to ask. Read. Neither will I tempt the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he said, hear ye now, O house of David. Is it a small thing for you to for you to weary men? Mm -hmm. But will you weary my God also? Mm -hmm. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. So because Ahaz wouldn't ask for a sign, Isaiah says, okay, the Lord is going to give you a sign anyway. What is this sign? Read. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. Wait, who is giving us get, being given this sign that a virgin shall have conception? King Ahaz. He was dead for centuries by the time Matthew is written, by the time that Christ is born, that by the time that uh, uh, Mary conceives. But we looked for that prophecy again. <laughs> you see that? I, we haven't even got to emphatically prove that this happened and it's already disqualified. Your entire logic, brother. You're foolish. So read. Con. It says, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Uh -huh. Butter and honey shall he eat, mm -hmm. that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. That he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. Read. For before the child shall know to refuse the evil. Before the child will be mentally developed enough to discern right from wrong read and choose the good uh-huh the land that thou abhorrest the place that you hate ahaz the place that ahaz hates which is talking about samaria and syria read shall be forsaken of both her kings the kings that reign in samaria and syria that were contemporary with king ahaz those lands would be sacked, destroyed, and defeated in battle before the child that he would have would be mentally able to discern right from wrong that's hundreds of years before Christ is born, yet we look for it again. Give me Isaiah 8 huh. to further prove this. Isaiah 8, 7 to 8, and then skip to 18. Read. Because Isaiah 8 and 7. Uh -huh. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord bringeth up upon them the waters of the river, mm -hmm. strong and many, even the king of Assyria. Ooh, go ahead. And all his glory. Uh -huh. And he shall come up over all his channels and go over all his banks. Uh -huh. And he shall pass through Judah. <laughs> He mm -hmm. shall overflow mm -hmm. and go over. He shall reach even to the neck, and the stretching out of his wings uh -huh. shall fill the breath of thy land, O Emmanuel. O who? Emmanuel. So Isaiah is talking to a child named Emmanuel. He's talking to a child named Emmanuel about something that's going to happen. After a chapter earlier, he prophesied that a child named Emmanuel would be born. So that's showing you, and go to 18 now, okay. that's showing you fulfilled prophecy. So why do we look for it again if it's fulfilled in Matthew? <laughs> huh? Read. Verse 18. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me. Well, I and who? The children whom the Lord hath given me. Read. Are for signs. One of the children that was given by the Lord was Emmanuel, as prophesied in the previous chapter. Context. That child was for a sign. Read. Are for signs. The children given to the individual that's speaking it which shows that it's not exclusively applicable to the context it takes on in Matthew 1. Read. Are for signs and for wonders in Israel uh -huh. from, the, from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. You see that? So a virgin did conceive and bore Emmanuel. This also takes the virgin birth and slashes it in total half because if that means that she, that Christ, Yahweh, was conceived immaculately, then Emmanuel, the child that was alive, that was born during that time, must have also had to be conceived immaculately. And if not, if one either either both were or none were, in order for that prophecy to be applicable. But we, we saw that prophecy be fulfilled, and then we saw it come again during the time of Hamashiach, Yahweh. So if after prophecy is fulfilled, we don't look for it again, there's a big conundrum with Christ in the New Testament, brother. Just so you know who you are, who you believe that you're saved by faith and grace through, right? Now let's go to Matthew. Get read Matthew two and twenty three. Let's show you another time in Matthew <laughs> that a prophecy is mentioned that is already fulfilled and then fulfilled again through Hamashiach. Go ahead, Matthew two and twenty three. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, uh -huh. that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. Wait, wait. He shall be. It was spoken about a prophet. He shall be called a Nazarene. Well, where is that at? Judges 13 and 5. Let's see if this was fulfilled. Pastor Eric Mason. 
And if so, again, why are we looking for it again? Why do we see it happening again in regards to Christ? Can you explain? Explain it. Uh, this is Judges chapter 13, verse 5. It says, For lo, thou shalt conceive. Mm -hmm. for, like it. for lo, thou shalt conceive. Thou, talking to a woman, you are going to conceive. Read. And bear a son, uh -huh. and no razor shall come on his head. Uh -huh. For the child shall be a Nazarite. He shall be called a Nazarene or a Nazarite. Read. Unto God from the womb, uh -huh. and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Wait, wait. Was Israel delivered by the Philistines from a Nazarite? Named Samson? Yes. So that was fulfilled. So why are we looking for it again in Matthew? If if it, it can only happen just one time. If it's fulfilled, we don't look for it again. See how stupid that was? You need to repent. You need to you should have gave that money and spread it amongst all that money that you spent on all of your academia, you should have spread amongst the Israelite camps to empower the ministries, and you should have gotten one and set stood on them streets and learned the truth of the Bible that these niggas on the street corner have been teaching. Because apparently we got something right that you don't have for you to be made, being made this big a fool of by a couple of niggas at three o'clock in the morning. I'm going to be totally honest with you. Right. So now. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, let's go to. Um, actually, yeah. Matter of fact, read that one, too. Come, this is Hosea chapter. Because they're talking about Yahweh was called out of Egypt. It said my son shall be called out of Egypt. Right. Also, that's also in the New Testament, right? Read that. This is uh, Hosea 11 and 1. Uh -huh. When Israel was a child, uh -huh. then I loved him uh -huh. and called my son out of Egypt. That was talking about the Exodus. <laughs> but do, do we look to be delivered out of Egypt again? Come. Do we look for a son to be called out of Egypt again? Go ahead. Matthew 2 and 15. And was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken <laughs> of the Lord by the prophet, saying. It was already spoken. And it already happened, yeah. right? Out of Egypt have I called my son. See that? So just because the prophecy is fulfilled doesn't mean we don't look for it again, oh simple one. Oh bald headed brother who needs to stop putting razors on his head. Um, according to the law. Now, okay, let's go there. Let's go to Bring to its complete, to its natural completion, all of the prophecies in the law. There are prophecies embedded within the law, and then there is the, and then there's the goal of keeping the whole law. No, that's the prophecies embedding that are embedded into the law, and the goal of keeping the whole law are two different things. And you know, and you're acknowledging that he's coming to fulfill the prophecies. Acts 3 and 18. You know and acknowledge he's coming to fulfill the prophecies, and that's what it's in reference to. And the Bible proves that. Acts 3 and 18. Acts three and two cut, which he's cut with in the course of the video and doesn't know how to deal with it, and that's when things become to be disastrous for the brother. Cut. Right, but read that. It's Acts three and eighteen. Uh -huh. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets uh -huh. that Christ should suffer, he has so fulfilled. That's it. That's what he's coming to fulfill. That the prophecies in regards to him that are found in what you would refer to as the Old Testament. Period. That's it. <laughs> so you don't know what you're talking about. Again, um, where we at? Okay. Idea in the scriptures. I mean, if you believe in salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, that's what's faith alone, grace alone. Again, faith alone, grace alone, Christ alone. Those are three different things. Is that another trinity or something? Those are three different things. How are any of them alone? Ridiculous. That's another problematic, stupid thing Christians say. And the law. And when someone says Christ and the law, now you've added, now you've added, now you've added to God's word, and therefore you're showing that you're not saved. So adding, so if you say Christ and the law, you've added to God's word. Revelation 14 and 12. This is Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. It says, here is the patience of the saints. Mm -hmm. Here are they that keep the commandments of God mm -hmm. and the faith of Yahweh. Yes. Is that Christ and law? Is that what it said? Christ and law, right? 
<laughs> is that adding to the word of God? That's the word of God, my brother. The hell is wrong with you? Romans 3 and 31. Again, let's reiterate that through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Then we can get into the, the, uh, the media part. Uh, okay. Romans 3 and 31. Uh -huh. It says, do we then make void the law through faith? Do we then make void the law through faith? Read. God forbid. Uh -huh. Yeah, we establish the law. You see that? It, I mean, it, it, it's literally that simple. And I want to, I've been saying this, I'm going to keep iterating it uh, so people can understand. And, and he made a very asinine and uneducated statement in regards to our understanding of the Gentiles that Paul went to. He said, oh, it's just scattered Jews. It doesn't just mean scattered Jews. It means Jews who lost their heritage and were amalgamated into other people groups, Gentile people groups, followed their culture, their customs. OK, I say all that to say this. The reason why faith was difficult during that time it was because of the circumcision the, the jews who lived in jewry right what is jewry jerusalem israel as a, a, a geographical location but also those who stayed in tune with the culture and in tune centrally with jerusalem no matter where they lived then you had those of us that discontinued from our heritage and were amalgamated into other cultures but the reason why it faith was emphasized so much scripturally when we see the ministries going out was because you had the jews and jury that were having a hard time with faith because of their uh misguidance in regards to the law even though faith and belief is seen as an overwhelming theme in the law which we're getting ready to go into here in a second that was that that's there right so that was the reason why it was being emphasized so much brothers in israel who were law 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 torah 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 Hamashiach Yahweh and his message in the message that was pushed by his apostles after the death, burial, and, re and resurrection, it was kind of radical, but it wasn't anything new. That also we're going to prove momentarily through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. It wasn't new, but it seemed radical because of the way that the Pharisees were pushing the law and the outward things of it rather than the internalization of it, right? But it was easier, and we see the Gentiles, which again, Gentiles just refers to brothers amalgamated into other cultures. Um, and there's historical references on this, um, i.e. the Hellenistic civilization and the Jews, which I'll always reference. Um, the reason why it was so easy for faith then, because you got to understand a brother who's grown up in a Greco-Roman world, um, following after Greco-Roman culture, Greco-Roman gods, um, Greco-Roman mythology, you got to believe in some way out stuff, right? Zeus and all this madness. So to think that a man died and came back to life is minuscule compared to the madness that they lead you to believe in Greco-Roman society. So that's why it was easier for brothers who came up in that society to understand the faith because that was a much harder concept to accept than the concepts they were fed in the society that they live in, worshiping the idols that they worship. So that's why that was there. And that's why there was that disconnect and uh, the truth was sprouting amongst brothers um, more so who were Hellenized than in Jewry because there was that disconnect there. But what we're going to do now is we're going to go into how Christ is the inner law because he references in the video. And this wasn't that that's such a concept that's so deep in the Bible and so many precepts go into that. We're not just going to um, play the clip and respond like we've done the rest. We're going to just go into it through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai with precept upon precept. All right. Um, so uh, uh, we're going to get going to it now. Uh, we just give me one second. Yeah, it kind of like the um, who was it on the comment board? Uh, I can't remember. Yeah, kind of like the brother Flaming Fire Israel said. Notice, notice how many scriptures he's going to versus how many scriptures we're able to go to. He'll he'll literally break down. Like for for instance, in the beginning of the video, he broke down Galatians the fourth chapter incorrectly, right? And then goes to various other scriptures and breaks them down incorrectly. But it's only a, a minuscule amount. We're going to like we were just bringing up precept upon precept. Multiple scriptures, two or three witnesses, law, prophets, Torah, Christ's words, Paul's words, because we come, we come through, we come in this truth, not just isolating Paul's, Paul's text. We search the entire scriptures, man. It's bad, and two, and Christians give Paul such a bad name because they live in Paul. All you do is isolate Paul all day, 
And then it seemed like we are rejecting Paul when we're not. And we're going to get ready to go all in Paul's writings and show everything that we're saying through the spirit. But you live in Paul as if Paul has the final say and is the sole creator of doctrine. It's crazy to me. You, When you go to Paul more than you go to Red Letter, more than you go to Hamashiach, Yahweh, who you call Christ, who you believe you're saved in by faith alone and grace alone. When you do that, you should realize it's a problem. You should realize what you're doing, especially after the, the head of the church, the rock that Yahweh built the church off of says that his words are misunderstood and wrestled with. These pastors go to these churches and do series on verses on one verse out of Paul. A series of sermons on a verse out of Paul. A piece of, a piece of Paul. Hmm. See what I'm saying? That's madness. Well, that's... Um... Remember, even going back to when you read, I believe it's, it's either First Peter three and fifteen or, or Second Peter three and fifteen, where it says, uh, when, "When Peter says in Paul, our beloved brother Paul, writing in his epistle, some things, uh, some hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned wrestle." And basically, they basically twist Paul's scriptures like they do to all the other scriptures. But um, there's just, it says in Ecclesiastes, "That which hath been is now, and there's no new thing under the sun." Because when you go into Acts the twenty first chapter, there were people. In in the uh, early church that were thinking Paul that what it said that um, that Paul was teaching people to forsake Moses and saying that we ought not to circumcise our children, but that's not what Paul was saying. They was just they was twisting what Paul was saying. Well, I, I can't even say they were twisting in the early church what they were saying. They were just they didn't understand what he was saying. The same way he Eric Mason and Christians they don't understand it. Uh, and to prove that he wasn't saying that he circumcised him. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. To prove it, he we went to works. To prove what he was saying. God. And that's, um, it, it's funny because uh, I'm glad that I got brought up because in the beginning of the video, he mentioned that he's familiar. He said, I know where you're going to go. Uh, Yo, know, just go ahead, get that Matthew 5 17. That's not where I wanted to go, was Matthew 5 17. But since he was so proud, I said, you know what? He's coming up here thinking he's got a he's got a, a game plan for Matthew 5 17. Which he didn't. He didn't. And if he does, we're going to poke all kinds of holes into that Swiss cheese game plan he has. But where I really wanted to go is Acts the 21st chapter. Because there's I would have loved to see how he would have tap danced out of that. Right. Um, so yeah, we're gonna um we're gonna go into this uh this Christ being the end of the law thing. Uh, and what I'll do is uh this is gonna be on a live, but what I'll do is take the video, download it after, and just isolate this breakdown. And we'll I'll probably put it up on the Sakari Water channel. Um, so everybody can see it. Uh, but yeah, so let's deal with it through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh and give all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Um Romans 3 and 20. We're going to start there with Romans 3 and 20. And we, like I said, we're going to go to Paul's words, we're going to go to Yahweh Shai's words, and we're going to go to that, what they call the Old Testament, the so-called Old Testament again. Like, And we, and we got to understand something too. And we calling these people out. Because Eusebius is the one that even introduced the concept of these scriptures of the Old Testament, these scriptures of the New Testament to the world. That isn't a concept that any of the people that are in the Bible ever subscribe to. So I don't believe in the Old Testament, New Testament. I believe in the compilation of the books and the records of the Israelites from Genesis to Revelations with Apocrypha, the books called Apocrypha included. All 80 of those books we believe in. There ain't no separation in Testaments. It's one fluid message from Genesis to Revelation, period. Right? But well, let's go to Romans 3 and 20. Okay, this is Romans chapter 3, verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. So Paul says, by the deeds of the law, nobody's going to be justified, right? But let's see if Paul made that up. Did Paul make that up? Is he just saying that? Is this a concept that he introduced? Or is this an Old Testament concept, so-called Old Testament? Let's find out. Psalms 143 and 2. That was in on 3 and 20? It says, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. Uh -huh. So, all right, now, boom. Psalms 143 and 2. This is Psalms chapter 143, verse 2. It says, and enter not into judgment with thy servant, for in thy sight shall no man living be justified. You see that? He's saying, don't judge me predicated upon that, because as far as you're concerned, in your sight, in your eyes, you're so righteous, none of us can be justified. So this was not a Pauline concept. We are clearly seeing this concept in the Old Testament by David. Who we're gonna go to one? Let's see who authored that song. God, this is uh this is a Psalm of David. A Psalm of David. 
This is a Psalm of David, and David is saying, we're not going to be justified by the law, right? So this is not a new thing, Galatians 3 and 11. This is Galatians chapter 3, verse 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of the Most High. Uh -huh. No man is justified by the law in the sight of the Most High. Read. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Again, is this a new concept? Or is this also a concept we see in the law and the prophets? Right? Habakkuk 2 and 4, you already know. Go ahead. It's Habakkuk 2 and 4. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. Uh -huh. But the just shall live by his faith. The just live in my faith. And no people being justified by the law are concepts we see iterated by the prophet Habakkuk and, of course, King David. So this is not a Pauline concept. Huh. Go ahead. And it only makes sense that Paul would be would be quoting these so-called Old Testament passages because he's called, he was a Pharisee. That's right. So he was well learned in the law, studied under Gamaliel. So, of course, he's going to be referencing these type of things in his writings. That's right. That's right. Get uh, Genesis 15, now 1 to 6. Because we want to build this foundation through the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai now to show y'all everything that's really going on and lead you into Romans 10 to build, you know, the, the arena, so to speak, so you can understand, you know, what's going on, get the whole picture, right? So uh, Genesis 5, I mean 15, rather 1 to 6. Okay, so Genesis 15 and 1. After these things, the word of the Yahweh came unto Abram in a vision saying, Fear. So the, Abraham, or who was Abram at this time, has a vision, and the word of the Most High Yahweh comes to him. Read. Saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield, uh -huh. and, and thy exceeding great reward. Read on. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? Okay, I'm childless. What are you going to give me? Right, read. And the steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus. Uh -huh. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. Uh -huh. And behold, the word of Yahweh came unto him, saying, this shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. Uh -huh. So your own son is going to be your heir, right? Read. Time. It says, and he brought him, and he brought him forth abroad, and said, Look now toward heaven, and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall this thy seed be. So the Most High told Abraham, You're going to have children as as innumerable as the stars in heaven that you're seeing, right? Read verse six. And he believed in the Lord. And he what? Believed in the Lord. The Most High simply says this to him. And Abraham believed it. He had faith in it. Belief, faith, trust. These are all synonymous things. Right. Read. And he counted it to him for righteousness. So his belief, his faith in what the Most High Yahweh said to him at that moment was counted to him for righteousness. So righteousness coming by faith. Is not a new concept. It's not a Christological concept. It's not a Paul concept, a Pauline concept. It is a concept that predates the codification of Torah. When does the Torah begin to be codified? With the uh, with the Ten Commandments, right? Which is Exodus twenty. So, you know, previous book in Genesis fifteen, before again the codification of Torah, righteousness by faith is a concept. This is why Abraham is called the father of the faith. Okay. okay, so there's nothing new here. That's one of the most important things to understand going forward. It's not a new radical thing. It's an ancient thing, a thing that, again, predates Israel even existing and being held to the standard of Torah. Right now, let's go to Romans 4 and read 13 to 25. I'm going now to the book of Romans, Paul's writings, because Paul is clarifying these things throughout his writings, right? 13 to 25. Okay. <clears throat> this is Romans chapter 4, verse 13. It says, but for the promise that he should be the heir of the world, mm -hmm, which was Abraham, right? For you? Was not to Abraham mm -hmm. or to his seed. Through the law. Through what? Through the law. So the promise that was given to Abraham that we just read about was not through the law. So this is how Paul is elaborating and, you know, clarifying everything. He didn't get this. That is how we're going to get saved through the law. Read. Come, but through the righteousness of faith. Uh -huh. Through what? Through the righteousness of faith. See that? That's how we got it. Genesis 15. We just read it through the righteousness of faith. Read. For they which are of the law be heirs. Faith is made void, uh -huh. and the promise made of none effect. Why? Because none can be justified by it. 
If we had to earn this promise that was given to us, we would have came short. And what proves that is the hell we're going through right now. The curses. These curses are the reprisal for not keeping it. And these are curses that we've had to go through over and over again. I mean, from coming out of Egypt, you go read in the book of Judges and you see captivity after captivity. You go read the prior, you see captivity. We've gone through countless captivities. Why? Because we can't be justified by the works and the law. Okay. So, so our uh, consolation is that, and this is what Yahweh was bringing, and this is what prophets alluded to, and this is what Paul is elaborating upon, that we fell short with our works, but the promise still was given by faith. So the promise is given. So we are literally upheld by the promise alone. See that? Now, of course, this doesn't mean we don't have to do our works. Y'all just hang in there. It's all going to come out. Keep going. Uh, it says, but through the righteousness of faith, for if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of none effect. Mm -hmm. Read on. So if we had to all earn it through working, then the promise would be pointless. But it's not. This is why all of Israel shall be saved, even the two thirds. They're not going to be saved initially, but ultimately they're going to be in the kingdom and they're going to reign over the earth. Okay. Even the wicked of the Israelites, okay. even those of us who have turned into righteousness, but lived the life of wickedness prior to it. None of us really deserve what we're getting here. We're all getting it predicated upon a promise that was given to Abraham that he obtained through faith. Okay. Go ahead. And, and that's why Ephesians 2 says, uh, what says, uh, um, let me just. Oh, no, we're, we're going to get to Ephesians 2. Let's well, not deviate. You are good. Keep going to Romans. Okay, verse, uh, verse 15. Because the law worketh wrath, uh -huh. for where no law is, there is no transgression. That's right. So, because the law worketh wrath, and we are all worthy of death, we've all done death worthy things according to the law, right? That's why the promise is there through faith that predates the law. Read. Okay. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace uh -huh. to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed. Exactly. So, through faith and grace is how the promise is made sure because none of us are worthy predicated upon our actions. Right. Read on. It says not to that only which is of the law, uh -huh. but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, mm -hmm. who is the father of us all. That's right. Keep going. Verse 17. For it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations mm -hmm. before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead and caught those things which be not as though they were, mm -hmm. who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Mm -hmm. And being not weak in faith, which we just read about Genesis 15 as the stars, right? Being not weak in faith, read on. He considered not his own body now dead uh -huh. when he was about a hundred years old. He was about a hundred years old. He, you have to understand, a hundred, God told a hundred year old man that he was going to have children and offspring like the stars of heaven. You mean to tell me that wasn't a difficult thing to believe? That's not difficult. Go tell any hundred year old nigga right now. He getting ready to have a, a, a offspring on that level that hasn't had kids yet, though. Not that already has kids. He could conceive that one that was childless up to ninety nine. Go tell that man that he getting ready to have children as the stars of heaven and see if he believe you. But this man, Abram, believed Abinawa Yahweh. He believed Yahweh without question. That's faith. That's how the reason why we're the chosen people, the reason why do, we can read Deuteronomy 7 and 6 and say we're above the nations is simply because a 99 year old man believed that God was going to make us this great. His belief in that, his trust, his faith in that is what got us, is, is what made us the greatest people on the earth, not our own doings. That's what Paul is elaborating on. That that man's faith is what's done all this for us and going to do all this for us if we have faith as our forefather. Keep going. When he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. And, 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 and then Sarah is barren. She's so barren that she gave him a, a side piece to uh, get Ishmael later. And he said, no, nah, that ain't going to be him. She going to come out of your wife that you love's womb, not the side piece. Hamite. Right? Read. Um, where do you want me to? 23? To, to, uh, 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 to 25. It says, he staggered not at the promise of God. He didn't unbelief. stagger at that. The average Negro going to stagger at that. At 45, he may not believe. Yeah. At 50. I mean, a nigga at 99, you imagine he's shooting powder at that point in that old age. Uh -huh. Right? Not to be too vulgar, but damn, he's 99 years old. Granted, people were living a little bit longer. 
right? But damn, at, a, at almost triple digits, I'm getting ready to have a child? Read. Come. It says, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God uh -huh. and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. He was fully persuaded in faith, man, just by hearing the word of God the same way we are. You walk by a camp or you see a video of brothers breaking it down. You're fully persuaded in faith. You just believe what's being read to you. Right. You just believe it. And that's counted to you for righteousness. And it's also just step one. <laughs> There's another step we're going to get to, right? But keep going. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. Mm -hmm. Now, it was it not, was imputed righteousness, right? Go ahead. Now, it was not written for his sake alone mm -hmm. that it was imputed to him. Not just for him, read. But for all, for, but for us also. Who's us? Read, uh, what is that, verse one? Um, read verse one, yeah. Let's see who the us is that Paul is talking about. Just as a quick jab. Uh, Romans 4 and 1. What shall we say then? That Abraham, our father, <laughs> by what? As pertaining as pertaining <laughs> to the flesh, <laughs> hath found. So he's writing to Israelites. <laughs> and he said, This is for us. He had faith, not just for him, but for us to get us a promise. Right? So we'd be great based on his faith alone. Hmm. His faith alone made us great, made us the greatest people on earth. Michael Jordan exists because Abraham believed the word of God without question that he was going to have a baby in 99. That's how Michael Jordan exists. You understand? A LeBron, a Kobe. Who would pick pick a great un un f -wittable person. All the, all the prophets. All the prophets. All the finest women in the earth. How do they exist? Because God told Abraham something and he believed it. It's a powerful concept. Showing you how powerful faith is. That's why Hamashiach said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, nigga, you can move a mountain. You can move a mountain. And us brothers in this truth, we move mountains every day. Read on. Um, it says, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Yahweh our Lord, from the dead, uh -huh. who was delivered for us. Believe on him that raised up our Lord, the most high Yahweh. If we believe in Yahweh, read. Who was delivered for our offenses. Uh-huh. And was raised again for our justification. Uh -huh. If we believe that Yahweh was sacrificed for us and raised, so we would be justified. If we simply believe that, it'll be imputed to his righteousness. Go ahead. Uh, uh, that's it on that. And that's why this is not, you got to understand, this is why when Hebrew Israelite camps, going back to the point I made before we got into the meat of the lesson, when we're out there emphasizing to our people we got to come back to the laws, it's because the faith part. In the death, burial, and resurrection, the same way it wasn't a problem for the brothers who were Hellenized in ancient times, it's not a problem for us because the average brother grows up Christian anyway and already believes in the death, burial, and resurrection. So it's the works part that we need to get down pat. We got the faith part down for the most part as far as the base level faith of the death, burial, and resurrection. So now that's why we're always emphasizing the works because we already believe. Huh. Now it's time to work. Right. Go ahead. And again, Paul, this is another example of Paul quoting the Old Testament. In this is not a new concept like the brother was bringing out. Faith. Right. This is who had who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. That's Isaiah. Yeah, well, you know, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah, I'm, I'm Isaiah hoping. 53, 8 to 11. Kind of Isaiah 53 and 8. He was taken from prison mm -hmm. and from judgment. Uh -huh. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living uh -huh. for the transgression of my people. For the offenses of Israel, for our sins. He was cut off. He was killed. Read. Khan, it says, for the transgression of my people mm -hmm. was he stricken. That's right. For the transgression of the Israelites was he stricken. Read. Khan, it says, verse 9, and he made his grave with the wicked mm -hmm. and with the rich in his death mm -hmm. because he had done no violence. Uh -huh. Neither was any deceit. Did you finish in 25 in Romans? Yes. Okay, go ahead. It says, Get it please the Lord to bruise him. Mm -hmm. He hath put him to grief when it, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He made his soul an offering for sin. Read. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. Uh -huh. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Read on. He shall see of the travail of his soul uh -huh. and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. So are we justified through Christ? Yes. Right here. That's prophecy. So this is what Paul is saying. Through believing that Yahweh did what he said he would do in the prophets concerning Yahweh Shai, that's the justification. He shall ju he Yahweh Shai is going to justify many. So justification through Christ is not a concept that Paul invented or Christ invented. 
It's a concept that Yahweh gave to the prophet Isaiah. See? There was an 11? No. It Go says, on. for he shall bear their iniquities. Uh -huh. Who? Uh, Go ahead. You want to just, all, just to 11? Just to 11. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. That's it on that? That's on that. All right, perfect. Romans now, 9. Let's go back to the book of Romans, which is the book in question. And we're going to read the verses that lead into chapter 10. Romans 9, 31 to 33, since we're right. dealing with context. Okay, this is Romans chapter 9, verse 31. It says, But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Uh -huh. Israel hasn't got there. Israel missed the mark on that as a nation. Read. Okay. Wherefore? Because they sought it not by faith. Uh, because And the reason was because we didn't try to do it by faith. Read. Huh. But as it were by the works of the law. Uh-huh. You see that? Because we, we're, we're thinking that we are great on our own and we can just do it ourselves. And that's not what it is. Faith in the Most High is what has enabled us. And what enables us, the same thing that enabled uh, Abinawa, uh, Abraham. The same thing. Right, read. Uh, it says, "For they stumbled at that stumbling stone." Uh -huh. They what? It's for they stumbled at that stumbling stone. They stumbled at that stumbling stone. Right. Keep going. Uh, as it is written, "Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone mm -hmm. and rock of offense." So Paul is just saying he keeps again. He's he's showing. I'm showing you him quoting the Old Testament through the Spirit. He's just going. I mean, they stumbled at the stumble. They're not. They're not getting it because they stumbled at the stumbling stone, just like the prophecy says. Uh, get that Isaiah twenty-eight and sixteen. That was in on thirty-three. And no, it says, uh -huh. uh, "And whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed." Mm -hmm. Shall not be ashamed, right? So let's get Isaiah twenty-eight and sixteen. Uh, the chat, y'all need to calm down in the chat, and that includes mods. This is a very deep lesson, and if people are not going to be paying attention, I'm going to start blocking everybody out there, even if you got a wrench. FYI, go ahead. Isaiah 28 and 19, right? 28 and 16. 16, This is Isaiah 28 and 16. It says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, mm -hmm. a precious cornerstone, mm -hmm. a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. That's right. See that? So the Most High told Isaiah, same thing he told him, in, he told him something in 53. Now he's telling him something in 28. That a stone will be laid, and if you believe in that stone, you'll be all right. See that? And Paul is saying he laid the stone, and here they are stumbling at it, just like he said they would. Right? Now let's go to uh Romans. Let's now get to Romans 10. And one, let's read one to four in Romans 10. Let's get to the verse in question. <clears throat> Romans chapter 10 verse 1 It says brethren my heart's desire And prayer to God for Israel Is that they might be saved uh -huh. For I bear them record That they have a zeal of God uh -huh. But not according to knowledge Right so he's saying Israel My prayer for Israel is for Israel to be saved Because our people got a zeal of God But <laughs> we're lacking in knowledge And Context now 10 makes perfect sense Ten and one makes perfect sense. And the reason why it makes perfect sense is because what he's saying in the verses leading up in nine at the end, they're stumbling at Yahweh Shai. They have a zeal of God, but they don't have the knowledge. They're not really understanding what the law and the prophets is talking about. They was talking about this guy. Right. So keep going. Come. It Come. says, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness mm -hmm. have not. So they thought that. Oh, yeah, if I just don't eat pork and I put fringes on, etc., then I'm righteous. Not understanding that the righteousness of God begins somewhere different. And it, that that's a it's a level of pride, truthfully, to think that you're just all this great, righteous, high and mighty on your own. No, you're right. Not, yeah. You're not. We need the most high. Right. None of this excuses lawlessness. And we're going to get to all of that momentarily what's up that's why yahweh shai said i can do nothing of myself that's right he didn't he even, didn't boast in himself even yahweh shai yeah even the greatest among us so how much more you exactly right so go ahead Con. it says um and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of god you want me to read verse four two the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. so the, so that's the problem it, it was a lack of full submission to the righteousness of god because faith 
is an intricate part of submitting to Yahweh is having that belief in him, knowing that he's in control. Because really, technically, you thinking you can get it on your own is you actually believing that you're in control of something on your own, that you're in control of your own destiny. Newsflash, spoiler alert, you're not in control of your own destiny. Yahweh is the author of all of this, the most high. So with that being said, you thinking that you're going to establish your own righteousness is asinine. And the reason why it is is because the most high is the one that's the author and in control and the supreme being and making all of this happen in the first place. So what's intricate here is the faith and trust in him that you need to have in order to be established properly because you can't do it on your own. And you're fooling yourself if you think you can. Right. So go ahead to four. Okay, verse four. For Christ is the end of the law uh -huh. for righteousness. Christ is the end of the law for right. They love going here. And we read all these verses leading up to this to lay that foundation through the spirit for y'all. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. Read to everyone that believe it. Everyone that have faith. He's the end of the law for righteousness. Not for anything. Not for everything. For righteousness. Meaning, how are we going to establish our righteousness through Yahweh Shai, not by our simply keeping the law? Sure. That's how our righteousness is now established. So, Acts 13 and 39, let's go there. What does all that mean? This may be confusing to some. So, now what we're going to do is delve into it. So, a full understanding, nothing is misunderstood. Um, some may, may be conflicted. You may have heard this or that. We're now going to cover all of those bases through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Starting with Acts 13 and 39. Read that. Acts 13 and 39. Uh -huh. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things, uh -huh. from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Exactly. Where we fell short in the law and, and the infractions that we've committed and the sins that we've committed, especially in our past, are now covered in him. We're justified in him. That's what it's saying. <laughs> Not that you can just do whatever you want and the law don't matter and just be just believe. No, you believe so you can cover your mishaps, your slips that you've had. Right? Because you couldn't be justified in other ways. So let's go to Romans 3 now. Back to Romans 3. We already read 20, but we're going to start at 19. We're going to read from 19 all the way to 31. But I want you to stop. A few places. So the first place I'm gonna need you to stop at is 21. Okay, this is Romans 3 19. Now we know what slack it. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, mm -hmm. that every mouth may be stopped and slack it, and all the world may become guilty before God. Mm -hmm. So all the world, so we're all guilty, right? We're all guilty. Go ahead. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified. See that? <coughs> so re reiterating about the deeds of the law. We're all guilty. So we don't have justification in that. Right? So read. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Uh-huh. Verse 21. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Uh, So right, being witnessed. So he's saying that everything that he's bringing out, everything that he's talking about is coming out of the law and the prophets as we've demonstrated. Right? Yeah, if... if Real quick, y'all, to the super chat, you just click that dollar sign, right? It's going to say super chat, send a highlighted message, right? Boom, you click on that, and then at that point, it'll um give you a dollar amount. And you know, if you want to add a message, you can add it, then you buy and send, and at that point, you put in your um your credit or debit card or whatever information, right? So go ahead. Con, that's it on 21. Uh read that again. Con it says, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. So the righteousness of God. Uh, Yahweh the Shaka Wath, the Wadi Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah Brakata. Um, the righteousness of God without the law, right? This is key. So, the righteousness of God, aside from works, aside from us keeping the law, has been manifested. So, basically, uh, an out for us, um, for our shortcomings, right? Read being witnessed by the law and the prophets. And he's saying it's manifested in Christ, but it was talked about by the law and the prophets of old. But it was manifested in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. We now see what it is. Uh, uh, Casey Wesley Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai Barakata. Peace and love, brother Thawada. Um, what's gonna call it? So yeah, it's manifest in Yahweh Shai, but it was talked about by the prophets and in the law. Let's prove that now. Hold what you got. Deuteronomy 18, 18, 19. Let's show. 
Okay. This is Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18. Uh -huh. And I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, uh -huh. like unto thee. Uh -huh. And I'll put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them uh -huh. all that I shall command him. That's right. In reference to Yahweh Shai, right? Uh, there's the 19. Verse 19. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak. If you don't listen to the word of Yahweh Shai, read. In my name, I will require it of him. Uh -huh. He's going to judge you. If you don't listen to what he says, get John uh, 6 and 47. Six and 47. This is John chapter 6, verse 47. Uh -huh. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me uh -huh. hath everlasting life. So you have to believe on me. You have The, the Torah says you got to believe what he says. And he's and listen to what he says, right? And he says you got to believe on me, right? So that means we got to believe on him. He's manifesting this, right? Daniel 9 now. 9, 24 to 26, but I got some precepts for 24, right? So let's read Daniel 9 and 24 first and then hold it, all right? So read. This is Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression uh -huh. and to make an end of sins. To make an end of sins, read. And to make reconciliation for iniquity uh -huh. and to bring in everlasting righteousness. So this is why when, when Paul says... Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. He's referencing Daniel 9 when Daniel says this, the end of this 70 weeks is going to be for everlasting righteousness through Yahweh, faith in him. So what he's talking about is in Daniel. This is why the rabbis say don't read Daniel because of stuff like this. He's not introducing new stuff. And this is why people think Paul is crazy when they don't understand. He's like, my nigga, this is in Daniel. I'm talking about what the law and the prophets are talking about. I'm not making this up. So right here in Daniel, read that last part again Con. about the everlasting righteousness. Con. And to bring in everlasting righteousness. Showing you when Paul said Christ is the end of the law for righteousness, this is what it's talking about. The everlasting righteousness, the end of the law. So it's not by us thinking we're just going to make ourselves righteous in, in works that we're made righteous now, but by the belief in the faith, which is how you even get to the point where you start keeping the laws. Right. So uh, hold what you got. Uh, Isaiah 64 and 6. Right. You, people want to boast themselves and act as if they're just so righteous on their own. Right. But what is said about our righteousness here in the Old Testament of prophets? Right. Read it's Isaiah 64 and six. It says, but we are all as an unclean thing uh -huh. and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. So our righteousness is a filthy rags through our works, through us just thinking that we're super law keepers. Our righteousness is filthy rags. What is a filthy rag? See this? Menstruation. Filthy rag. A tampon. We're about as righteous as a tampon by our, the works of our flesh. <laughs> this is what you have to understand. You're as righteous as a tampon, so you are fooling yourself if you think you're not going to get this through faith in Amashiach Yahusha. You're fooling yourself because you're as righteous, again, as a dirty, used tampon. Let that sink in. That's Old Testament. That's prophets. That's what Paul is talking about, right? Go back to Daniel. Actually, hold on, let me see. Finish it up. Yeah, go back to Daniel. Okay. And let's read 25 and 26. Kind of or did you finish Isaiah? Well, I mean, that's pretty much it on Isaiah. Oh, okay, all right. We go back to Daniel. 25 and 26, read that. Kind of so Daniel 9 and 25 now. Now therefore, and now, therefore, and understand that from the going forth of the commandment mm -hmm. to restore and to build Jerusalem mm -hmm. unto the Messiah. To Jerusalem, the city, the commandment to... Finish the city, not the temple, the city. Yeah. All right. That's how this timeline works. The 70 weeks. Some people believe it's on hold. No, the 70 weeks was accomplished. Right. If you just follow the timeline. Read. Con, unto the Messiah, uh -huh. the prince shall be seven weeks. Mm -hmm. And the three Messiah, the prince shall be seven. That's uh, Hamashiach Yahushai, right? Uh, which is um, uh, 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 the time where he was born. Right, Read. And, there, and three score in two weeks, uh -huh. the street shall be built again in the wall, even in troubulous mm -hmm. times. 62 times seven to get the, the math on that, right, Reed? Con. And after three score in two weeks, uh -huh. shall Messiah be cut off. See that? Be cut off, right? Read. Con. Uh, but not for himself. Uh -huh. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city mm -hmm. and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood, mm -hmm. and unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. Mm -hmm. The Romans, right, Reed? That's 26. That's 26. So that's all just talking about the timeline of from us rebuilding the city of Jerusalem to Yahweh Shah coming, appearing, and uh, uh, being crucified. 
All right. In the midst of the week, the week is a seven year period. So the midst of the week is about three, three and a half years. Right. Uh, so that's how it happened. Now, let's go back to Romans and read 22 to 28 now, just so y'all can understand the everlasting righteous was brought in by Hamashiach Yahalashai, and that's what Paul is referring to in his writings, right? So now let's go 22 to 28. Go so ahead. You said Romans what? Romans. Back to Romans 3. Okay. And 22 to 28. Hold it, because we're still there. These are just offshoot precepts to bring clarity to the verses in Romans, okay. right? So go ahead. This is Romans chapter 3, verse 22. Uh -huh. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Yahweh Shai, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Uh -huh. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of That's God. That's what he can. We all come short. We all sin. So this is why Yahweh Shai is there and necessary. Right, Read. Con. Being justified freely by his grace mm -hmm. through the redemption that is in Yahweh Shai. Uh-huh. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation mm -hmm. through faith in his blood mm -hmm. to declare that his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. That's right. So Yahweh said, I'm going to send him here because you guys have been so wicked. I'm sending him here. So if you have faith in him, you're covered for the things that you've done prior to him. Right, Read Through the forbearance of the Most High. Uh -huh. To declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness. Mm -hmm. That he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Yahweh. You see that? So now he's the justifier. So how we justify through Yahweh Shai? Because he's the justifier to those who believe in him. Right? Read. Therefore, we conclude. Or slide in verse twenty-seven. This is important. Where is boasting then? It is excluded mm -hmm. by what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. You see that? So we're not boasting of. The works of our flesh here saying, oh, man, I'm so righteous. The guy got the biggest fringes. All my clothes is fringed out and blue bordered out. And, man, I don't never read no damn pork, man. And blah, blah, blah. Not saying you shouldn't do those things, but you have nothing to boast of because even with all that you do, you're still a tampon. Yeah, exactly. You can't be justified. You've done too much in this life and in previous. So the most high to give us a bailout sent Yahweh and said, listen, Faith in him is how I'm going to count y'all righteous now. Okay. Right? Keep going. Okay. Okay. It's, it's 28. We got a precept for 28. Okay. Go ahead. Verse 28. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Without the deeds of the law. So let's, I want to show y'all this word for without in the Greek so we can understand that. Um, this is a strong G5565. And it means separate, apart, right? Or besides, without any. So apart from the law, apart from our works, right? Read that again. It says, therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. That's right. Separate or apart from the deeds of the law, we're justified through faith. That doesn't mean not the, the, the deeds of the law are nothing and don't do them and don't worry about them. But apart from what we do in our works, our justification is coming through faith. It's not negating keeping the law. And that's what we're going to uh, uh, kind of transition into now in this section of the lesson but let's go to um hebrews get hold what you got though get hebrews 11 and 6. Okay. it's the book of hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Uh -huh. it says but without faith it is impossible to please him this is such a profound point it's impossible to please the most high yahweh the creator of heaven and earth without faith okay. it's an impossibility so that's why it says aside from the law aside from your works in the law faith is your justification why because you can't please Yahweh without faith let's prove this that this has been the mo of the most high and get uh uh drop what you gotta get the, as far as hebrews keep Romans hell, but get uh, Numbers 14 and 11. And let's see if this wasn't a consistent problem with Israel, a lack of faith. Okay, this is Numbers chapter 14, verse 11. It says, And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? And how long will it be ere they believe me? You see that? Yeah, I was saying, How long will it be that they don't believe me? Belief, synonymous with what faith? He's saying, how long will it be till these niggas start having faith? Huh. This is in the Torah. This is in the wilderness. It's a problem from Jump Street with Israel. <laughs> Skip to 20 and 12, still in number. Huh. This is verse 20. It says in the No, no, the 20th chapter oh, in the 12 verse. Sorry. Good. This is uh, Numbers 20, verse 12. 
from oh yeah page stuck to me on my phone it says and you know, I was speak unto Moses and Aaron because ye believe me not mm -hmm. to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel therefore you shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them you see that he said because these niggas don't believe me because they don't have enough faith these all gotta die and it's gonna be the young ones that come in they gotta die it's the, I'm gonna let the next generation in because there's no faith in this generation right get Psalm 78 and 21 Read 21 to 22 in uh, Psalm 78, and then skip to 31, the 31st verse, right there. Psalm chapter 78, and verse 21. It says, Therefore, Yahweh heard this and was wroth. So a fire was kindled against Jacob, and anger also, and anger also came up against Israel. Mm -hmm. Because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation. So why did the most high Bring his wrath because they didn't have faith. This is showing you that what is written in Hebrews about it's imp impossible to please the most high with faith, without faith rather. We're going to these verses to show you this has always been the case from Torah to the prophets, etc. Right? Read on. Uh, that was to 22? That was uh, 22. Kind of. Okay, skip to 31, read 31 and 32. Kind of verse 31. The wrath of God came upon them and slew the fattest of them mm -hmm. and smote down the chosen men of Israel. Uh huh. For all this, they sin still and believe not for his wondrous works. Right. Believe not. They sin through not having faith. <laughs> not having faith, according to that, is a sin. You see that? So that I mean, makes it part of the law. <laughs> yeah. That's the cool part about it. It's a part of the law. Yes. All right. And we're going to bring it all full circle. Um, Let's go to Isaiah 7 and 9. It's Isaiah chapter 7, verse 9. It says, And the head of Ephraim is Samaria, and uh, and the head of Samaria is Ramelia's son. Mm -hmm. If you will not believe, surely you shall not be established. You see that? If you don't believe, if you don't have faith, you're going to be destroyed. You ain't going to be established. That's the opposite of being established in that context, being destroyed. Without belief, you'll be destroyed. It's all Old Testament love. Um, Let's now go to Deuteronomy 32 and 20. Let's go back to the Torah. Let's see what the Torah says. Let's see if faith is a part of the Torah. This is Deuteronomy 32 and 21. It says, They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. Uh -huh. They've become idolaters. Right, Reed? Uh, mm, 20, huh? 20. So, slack, yeah. Okay. 20. The, and he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be, mm -hmm. for they are a very forward generation, mm -hmm. children in whom is no faith. See, that, that's the price. This is the problem. These, these people are faithless. From jump, the most high is saying this about Israel. There is a faith problem, right? So now let's go back to Romans. Read, and we're reading 29, 29 to 30. And I got some precepts for 30. Um, so go ahead. Romans 2 and 29. Uh -huh. Is he the God of the Jews only? No, no. 3 and 29. 3, three and 29. You, you, you call it 2, it's 3. Okay, sorry. Romans three and twenty nine. Uh -huh. Seeing it is, uh, he is the God. Is he the God of the Jews only? Mm -hmm. Is he not also the God of the Gentiles? Talking about all the Israelites scattered and the ones that were still a part of conventional Jewry. Read. Yes, of the Gentiles also. Uh huh. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith uh -huh. and uncircumcision through faith. All through faith, right? Read. Do we then make <laughs> void the law through faith? So, Salaki, you need to stop at thirty. Right. So you jumped a little bit. Let's not spoil it. Right, because y'all know that's coming. Um, because it already came out earlier. Uh, but let's go to Romans four now. Romans four nine to eleven. Because Romans chapter four verse nine. Uh huh. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only? Uh huh. Or upon the uncircumcision also? Uh, again, that's just in reference to amalgamated Hellenized Israelites and Israelites that were still true to Jewry. Read. For we for we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham uh -huh. for righteousness. Faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. Again, we read that at the top of the lesson. Faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness from just believing, right? Read. How was it then reckoned uh -huh. when he was in circumcision uh -huh. or in uncircumcision? So it was reckoned in uncircumcision. Before the circumcision of Abraham, he was referenced righteous through faith, right? Before his circumcision, before the work of circumcision, right? Now read. Not in circumcision, uh -huh. but in uncircumcision. But in uncircumcision, read. And he received the sign of circumcision. Uh -huh. He received. Now watch. He was counted righteous by having faith before he was circumcised. Then he received the sign 
of being circumcised, read a seal of the righteousness of the faith. You see that? So his work of getting circumcised was a seal of his faith. And this is how it all comes full circle. We read about all this faith that we need to have. We read about it in the Torah. We read about it in the prophets, the Psalms. We read about it in the New Testament. The faith that we need to have. And now Paul is clearing it up here saying there's a sign of faith, a seal of your faith. That's your works. What was the sign of the faith of Abraham? Him circumcising himself as he was commanded. So the keeping of the commandments and the following of the law that we do is a seal of the faith that we have in Hamashiach Yahushua. That plain and that simple, right? That was 11. Con, a seal the righteousness of the faith which he had yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised. Faith and works is how it happened. Starts with faith, and that's counted for righteousness. Then come works, right? Go ahead. That righteousness might be imputed unto them also. You see that? So it's the same way for us, the same way it was for Abraham. Abraham simply believed. Then a few chapters later, he gets circumcised and it does what he's told. The same way now we believe, then we start doing what we're told. The same way you were wicked, you were evil, you were sinning, you found out you're an Israelite, the Bible was taught to you, and you began to keep the law. But it started with you simply believed. You ain't keeping all the laws day one in this truth, man. I remember I first came in the truth. I ordered the BLT. I'm biting into it. My pop looking at me. I, think I thought you would stop eating pork. <laughs> oh, shit, you're right. Let me put this down. I'm keeping the law now. <laughs> but I believed first. The only reason I put that pork down was because I believed. When I went and I was still shaving when I first came in the truth. Then about a month in, I went and uh, 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 walked in the bathroom. I picked that razor up. I looked at myself in the mirror as I was going to shave. And I said, I can't do this because I believed. My belief led me not to shave my face anymore. You see what I'm saying? My belief made me put that BLT down. My belief led to the works as a sign of my beliefs. Because if you truly believe in something, you're going to have your actions speak louder than your words. We all understand this, right? Just like when I was talking to the officer aside the other day and I said, it's like saying I believe I'm going to go to the NBA. And I'm not, I'm not putting hours in in the gym to make it. I just, that that, I, I just think I'm going to go to the NBA. I believe, bro, I believe I'm going to be an NBA star one day. But you're not doing anything in order to obtain that? <laughs> yeah, right. How much more salvation than the NBA contract? Right. See what I'm saying? So let's go. Where we at? Uh, um, let's finish 11 Romans 4. We just finished 11. Okay. Um, so like here. Let's go now to uh, uh, a, a Sirach 32. And 20? Uh, and 24. Sirach 32 and 24. There you go. All praises. Kind of, this is Sirach chapter 32, verse 24. It says, he that believeth in the Lord taketh heed to the commandments. If you believe, if you have that faith, that trust in the Most High, you're going to take heed to the commandments. One is a result of the other. So all this faith that these Christians claim to have, they don't have it. Or else they take heed to the commandments, man. They take heed. And that's why so many people are leaving these churches at astronomical numbers, and it's going to keep happening amongst blacks and Latinos and Native Indians. It's going to keep happening because the truth of the Bible is being made manifest through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shadda, where the Israelites, we have to have faith and we have to keep the laws, period. Now, uh, let's go back to Romans now, read 31. Hammer is pointing through the spirit. Uh, Romans 3 and 31. Do we then make void the law through faith? Uh -huh. God forbid. God forbid. And all this faith that we're supposed to have that he just took time to eloquently elaborate upon that we've been talking about, that we have to have faith and we're going to be right, be made righteous by our faith. Does that now make void the law? Read. God forbid. God forbid. It doesn't. So we have to keep the law. <laughs> but all the faith that we have to have and it's going to we're be going to be justified by our faith and we're going to and we're counted righteous by our faith. We still got to keep the law. Right. We just got to also and initially have the faith. Period, right? So let's go to uh, no, it was 31. So yeah, we established the law. Yeah, we, you, we, what established, the we law. established that law, man. That's what we're doing. I, I like the Haitian Creole version as I comment on sometimes because the Haitian Creole version basically says we keep the law harder now. You see that we keep it harder. Let's go to James now, James 2 and 14, and we're gonna read all the way to 24. Exactly, Mark D. It's an act. 
My, uh, Pastor uh, Eric Mason, we just played his video a couple posts after the video that he posted that he lied uh, uh, multiple times in. Um, he, he took a Valentine's Day pic with his girl. <laughs> Crazy, right? Go ahead. James 2 and 14. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? You said read the work? Uh, Salakia. Um, where we at? Uh, uh, James 2 and 14. James 2 and 14 to 24. Jaden, uh, uh, Jaden Slayer. That's that's ask mine, bro. Go ahead. He's he's a he's a uh, repeat offender. Um, oh, okay, he's out of here. Yeah, it says, What doth the prophet, my brethren, though a man say he had faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Mm -hmm. So, if you have faith without works, can faith save him? Read if a brother or sister be naked and that's to the daily food. So, so this is how he, he's going to make a comparison here, right? If somebody's naked and hungry, starving, read. Come. And one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled. Uh huh. Now go be warmed and filled. I hope to help you go. Hey, 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 man, go get some clothes, man. Go eat you some food. You know, read. Notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. <laughs> what doth it profit? It's unprofitable. So, the same way you tell somebody who has no clothes and is starving, hey, man, hey, look, just, you know, go get some clothes and go eat. And you don't do anything to actually help that person obtain clothing and food. And to, for, to sustain himself, that's the equivalent to just having faith without works. It's the little equivalent. It's being iterated by James, the brother of Yahweh Shai, might I add. His brother. Same father, same mother. Right? Read. Even so faith, if it had not works, is dead being alone. Uh-huh. It's dead. Right? So what the Christians are teaching us is to be dead. What we're teaching to keep the laws and have faith is to be alive. Isn't Yahweh Shai made a quickening spirit? So why are they teaching you to be dead according to the words of his brother? Huh? But we're teaching you how to live, showing you that we are in the spirit of Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, not them. Right? So read. Um, yea, a man may say, thou hast faith. Uh -huh. and, I, and that's what all of the Christians say. Right. That's what Pastor Eric Mason would say. I have faith. I'm saved through faith alone, by grace alone, and Christ alone. Okay, cool. Go ahead. And I have works. Uh -huh. Show me thy faith without thy works. Show me your faith without your works, read. And I will show you my and I will show thee my faith by my works. When we emphasize the commandments to our people, when we keep the commandments, we uphold them and we walk as lights and examples amongst so-called blacks, Hispanics, and native Indians to do it. We are showing our faith. We're showing how much we believe in our God and his son that we do things that go against everything that we've ever been taught. We do things that go against everything that's here. We walk around with fringes hanging off our clothes. You think people look at us crazy? We go on the street corners and we teach the Bible. Don't you think people look at us crazy? Why else would we do that if we didn't believe in this thing, man? You know who doesn't believe these keyboard prophet niggas? They don't believe. That's why they never on the streets. That's why they never, they don't got works. But we believe. We have faith. And because of our faith, we're led to keep these laws, man. We show our faith, our immense faith, by our works, and then we pray for more faith. And you know what happens when we pray for more faith and the Most High increases our faith? We start doing even more works, even greater works. All praise you, how about Shem Yahushua. Go ahead. It says, Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. <laughs> Go ahead. Come. But without, will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? There you go. It's dead. Go ahead. Was not our father Abraham justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought his? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works? Going back to the father of the faith, Abraham, showing you how the faith wrought worked with his works, okay. came together with his works, coupled with his works. Read. And by works was faith made perfect. And our faith is perfected through our works. Point blank. If we truly believe in what Yahweh Shah said, what the Most High said, and put all over this Bible, then we're going to do what it says to do, okay. which is the laws. Read. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. Uh -huh. And he was called the friend of God. Uh -huh. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Not by faith only. But you said, come along, go ahead. you said the law plus faith, that's added to the word. <laughs> see that? See how stupid he is? 
That's why he knew you were coming with James too. He saw the punch coming, but still didn't have a defense for it. <laughs> I didn't even need to go. That's what I'm saying. You didn't even need to go there. How you scout a punch and still get hit with it? Right. <laughs> you knew. You know I'm coming. I'm coming with the overhand right, nigga. I still knock you out with right, it. Well, that's yeah. literally how much I said. If, if a man knows when the feet is gonna come, surely the feet won't come. But, yeah, I mean, you knew I was going. And I still came. Right? I still came, and I still, I still stole everything. <laughs> oh man, it's crazy, man. Uh, go ahead. And that's it on 24. That's 24. Okay, let's go to Genesis 26 and 5 then. Because we read in Genesis 15 how the Most High said one thing to Abraham, and he believed it and had faith in it, and it was imputed to him for righteousness, right? So now let's read this in Genesis 26. Read. This is Genesis 26 and 5. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Mm -hmm. he, he obeyed. The, what matter of fact, read four real quick. So like, Genesis 26 and 4. And I will make th thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. See that? Now, mind you, this is what he promised him. And he simply believed. And it was counted from the righteousness through his faith, right? Now it says, I'm going to do this now. I'm going to I'm gonna do my promise now. Read. Kind of, this is speaking to uh, Isaac, I believe, too. Uh -huh. Go ahead. And will give unto thy seed all these countries. Uh -huh. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Uh -huh. Why? Because that Abraham obeyed my voice. You see that? And, Go ahead. and kept my charge, uh -huh. my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. You see that? So because he had faith. It was kind of him righteousness. And then I'm making good on my promise because he did the works. He kept the law, statutes, commandments I gave him. You see that? So we believe, y'all. We just hear the word. We believe it. Then we keep the laws of commandments so we can receive the gold, the prize, the realization of the promise given to Abraham, salvation, possession of the now of the Euphrates, rulership and dominion and principality over the whole planet of earth on Amashiach Yahweh. We get that from starting with faith and then perfected through works. Period. Right? It's what the Bible is saying. All praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh. Period. Right? Where we at? Uh that was Genesis 26 and 5. Okay, boom. Let's go to Galatians 2, 17 to 18. <laughs> you good old joint. He dance, he do, he dance. <laughs> I know a brother that big can dance. <laughs> man, that brother can boogie, man. Boogie with the best of them. <laughs> sorry, Galatians 2 and 17. It says, but. Can't say but. But. <laughs> no, he, did, he said we should never say but. He said it. Here, it's a but pause. It's in the Bible. <laughs> but if while we seek to be justified by Christ, mm -hmm. we ourselves also are found sinners. Ooh. So if we are, we're, we're justified in faith through Christ, right? Mm -hmm. But if we sin, sin is transgression of the law. If we break the laws, if we're not keeping the laws while we're seeking to be justified by faith in Yahweh Shai, then what? Is therefore Christ a minister of sin? You're making Yahweh Shai a minister of sin, read. God forbid. But God forbid that to be a truth, read. Con. For if I build again the things which I destroyed. We destroy what? Sins. That's it, that's it on that. They go, that was the 18? 18, yeah. Uh, okay. So point blank period. Matter of fact, read 17. Romans, or sorry, Galatians 2 and 17. It says, but if while we seek to be justified by Christ, uh -huh. we ourselves also are found sinners. Uh -huh. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? See that? Read. God forbid. God forbid. So when a Christian comes up to you and asks you how you justify you, so I'm justified through faith in Christ. And then you take him right here. But if, read it again. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, I'm justified through faith in Christ. But if what? If I'm if I'm seeking to be justified, read. We ourselves also are found sinners. But I can't sin. In order to be justified, I can't sin according to this scripture, right? What is sin? Then you already know where to take him. Sin is transgression of the law, first time. So that's how you do it with him. He's trying to tell you. So yeah, tell him you do keep the law. I love my brother. That's a cut. I'm going to go to what is love on you, nigga. Just take him right to what is love when he does that. Love is the keeping the commandments. Nigga, you ain't keeping the commandments. Bye. Right? But if they try to say how you justify, yeah, I'm justified through faith in Yahweh Shai. But if I'm sinning while I have faith in Yahweh Shai, I'm making Yahweh Shai the minister of sin. And God forbade that so I can't do it. I can't sin to, and while I'm being justified through my faith. Therefore, I have to keep the law because breaking the law is sin. It's that simple. Okay, well, well, this is how sick the Christian church is. What God Christ put on the cross in the first place is us and our sins. Yes, so our, you can, our sins. That's what God is. That's what God has put on the cross in the first place. So why would you keep doing that? You you want him to? That's what Hebrews ten and twenty six is going. You want him to come and be crucified. You want him to be fresh. crucified again. You yeah, want him right. to go die again. That's right. That's what the Christian they, they crucify him every day. Exactly. But that's another way in when and 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 this being the place where our Lord is crucified. No. That's another context, not just in his image and in, in his character, not just in the body of him being crucified and persecuted, but also in them seeking to keep sinning 
and be justified by him. Yeah. That's another way where they crucify him again, man. Right? Where this is another way where this place is also the place where our Lord was crucified, man. Right? Uh that was it on that? Okay. On 18. Okay. Uh Revelations 2 and 17. Okay. This is Revelations chapter 2, verse 17. He that hath an ear, let him hear mm -hmm. what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Mm -hmm. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, mm -hmm. and, and will give him a white stone, oh. and a stone, and in the stone a new name written, mm -hmm. which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Yeah, that, that stone is basically an exemption from judgment in the Roman court system, um, showing that you're innocent. So you may have done something, but you get that white stone, you're pardoned for what you did. So it's showing you that faith in him is going to get us pardoned for our past sins um, that we committed, that we should die for. But through faith in him, we're not going to die for it. So he's our justification that what we couldn't, you know, what we came short up at. That's why he's so important. We can do it on our own. He wouldn't need to descend him. Yeah. But because we can't, that's the necessity of Hamashiach. Yeah, that's the um, remission of sins past. Exactly. And even, and guess what? And even for himself. That's another thing. Even for himself, going back to uh, uh, Second Samuel, right? But um, where we at? Where we at? Boom. Matthew 10 and 32. This is Matthew chapter 10, verse 32. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. You see that? So basically our justification comes through him, through you doing what he told you to do, confessing him before men. Then he goes to the Father and says, yes, this brother. And then you're justified after where you're getting in off his word. He, Yahweh shot like the plug. Yahweh was the boss, and he gonna let anyone into this kingdom, or let's just say, let's make it a club. Yahweh runs the club, but Yahweh shot is going, hey, look, him, he good. Boom, he with me. He with me. He with me. And that's how you're getting in. So without faith in him, if you don't have faith in a the man, then he ain't gonna say, oh, he with me. <laughs> now, I don't know that nigga. Tell him, get to the back of the line. Guess what? You're still gonna get in. But you're not getting in. You ain't cutting the line. Mm -hmm. The elect and the one third, they cutting the line. The rest of Israel, he loves you. A promise was made to Abraham for you. But you're just going to have to sit in line. <laughs> we're going to be, hey, listen, we're going to be in the VIP section, nigga. Bottles, nigga. Oh, so. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Is it, like that. Hey, look. I, yeah, hey, look. <laughs> hey, I, is it not written? The Lord prepareth a table for me amongst my enemies. Yeah, hey, we at the table, service. nigga. That's bottle service, service, nigga. Bottle service. You feel me? That's how with, 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 with the kingpin Hamashiach Yahweh shot, man. Yeah, well, Yahweh shot. I'm not going. I'm not going to drink again and sell the. It's a boy. It's a king. king. Hey, I, to have the uh, the most lit Israelite party <laughs> in the kingdom of heaven. You feel me? Yeah, so uh, isolate that. Get mad at now. Get mad get about mad that. that. That's right. I freak that out. Uh, you just mad because you were uninvited. Yeah, that's you're right. How you gonna hate from the outside of the club? You can't even get in. <laughs> Eric Mason at the back of the line. Hey, what's up? Hey, hey, my hey, dude. We gonna shut you out. We gonna say hey, you gonna... ain't trip, man. I'ma see you when you get in, bro. I'm sorry, I remember when you, you, brother. Hey, look, you. when you somebody's son, right? right. Uh, uh, where we at? <laughs> uh, Matthew ten thirty two. You finish that. Um, it says, "Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven." Uh huh. Boom. So, well, uh, let's go to Revelations three and five. Okay. This is Revelation 3 and 5. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, uh -huh. and I will not blot out his name from out of the book of life. So the book of life is the same thing of him mentioned um, him to his father. It's equivocated is the same thing, conceptually, scripturally. So he said he that overcometh. So that's it on that verse. But I will confess his name mm -hmm. before my father. Showing you that they're the equivalent thing. They're interchangeable. The book of life and the confession of the name before the father. Right, Read. Uh, before my father and before my uh, before his angels. Exactly. So he didn't overcome it. This is an interesting concept. What is overcoming? Let's go to First John five and four. Let's understand what overcoming is. Now we're not taking questions yet. As soon as we get done with the lesson, we'll take questions. A few more scriptures left through the Spirit. All praise y'all, Bashim Yahushua. It's coming out very clear. I'm very happy that we delved into this to this level. Um, so we can give this level of clarification to Israel. So go ahead. It's First John five and four. Uh -huh. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. So we understand now. Whoever overcometh is who the, who Yahweh is going to mention to the Most High, who's going to be justified, who's going to get the white stone. Whoever overcomes, right? Read that again. For for whatsoever is born of God uh -huh. overcometh the world. So now we understand whoever is overcoming is who's born of God. Right? Finish four. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, uh -huh. even our what, faith. Where, where you at? 
verse that was verse four. Okay, so our faith is the symbol of our victory. That that what's that overcome? Right. Go ahead. That's in four. Okay, go jump to eighteen. Verse eighteen. It says, um, "We know that whoso that whosoever is born of God sinneth not." Uh, so, but okay, so who that overcome is one that's going to be justified through faith. But he that overcometh is <laughs> wait. <laughs> he that overcometh. Is he that sinneth not? Because he that overcome it, he that is born of God, and he that is born of God sinneth not. So what are you doing in keeping the laws in order to overcome? Because in order to, exactly, in order to get confessed before the Most High, which is how you get justified, name, book of life. Okay, boom. So I got to keep the law. Yeah. <laughs> all all arrows point toward keeping. All the law. arrows point there. Period. All roads lead to the Torah. Not wrong, right? So read. If any man, uh, so, that's eighteen. Uh, we know that whoso is born of God sinneth not, uh -huh. but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. <laughs> you see that? So now let's go to three and nine in a uh, first John. This is a uh, first John chapter three verse nine. It says, "Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin." See that? You don't commit sin. Sin is transgression of the law. If you're born of God, that's who will be overcome. He to overcome is who's going to be written in the book of life. He don't sin. He don't break the law. Read for his sin. Uh, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Mm -hmm. Did you see that? He can't. He go keep the law because he's born of God. Huh. Skip the four. Go, jump down to four and read four to eight, the, the, the preceding verse. Go ahead. This is First John 3 and 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. Uh -huh. Ooh, we see that? If you're born of God, you don't sin. If you're born of God, you overcome. If you overcome, you get your name put in the book of life, meaning you'll be justified. See that? Sin is transgressing the law. You can't transgress it. You can't break it, meaning you got to keep it. Read. Huh. It says, for sin is a transgression of the law. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. See that? Go ahead. Let's go right back to Isaiah 53. <laughs> Period. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Well, that's that's why um, I, this must need. <laughs> this must, I must need be speak. <laughs> it says, I'm going to read it again. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Right? Where else do we read about not knowing him? Matthew 7 and 21. But I'm going to read this um, verse. I'm going to read verse 21. And then I'm going to jump to verse 23. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. Verse 23. Um, I'm going to just keep going. I'm going to read verse 22 and 23. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and perform many miracles in your name. But I will reply... I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. So that's why it says, whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Because you, he said right here, get away from me. I never knew you, you who break the laws of God. Because you are a sinner. Eric Mason, back in the line, nigga. Right. We at the table, most I will, right? So go ahead. It says, little children, let no man deceive you. This is First John 3 and 7 now. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous even as he is righteous uh -huh. he that committed sin is of the devil so now it actually is still equivalent making righteousness in line with the laws so having faith and keeping the laws is righteousness don't let nobody deceive you from that is what john is beseeching you to understand don't let the christian church lie to you don't let pastor eric mason lie to you read con it says for the devil sinned from the beginning for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested uh -huh. that he this might. the reason why Yahweh Shai came. Go ahead. That he might destroy the works of the devil. Oh, we. The, 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 the same thing that Paul said. He destroyed it, right? Mm -hmm. Through what? Faith in Yahweh Shai. Exactly. So then he stopped what? Sinning. Yeah. Meaning he did what? Kept the law. You're 20 <laughs> years of life. You couldn't figure this out, buddy. Or sorry, 20 years of, sin of, of study. study. 45 years of life, most high in Christ. That's a long time. Oh, yeah, bro. It's been a long time. <laughs> oh, man. I, I don't know if a change is going to come for you. you know. Change going. Uh, 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 1 John 2 and 1. 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, and uh, I will shy the righteous. Don't, don't sin, and if we do sin, we have that advocate that's going to vouch for us. That good old Johnny Cochran in the sky, as I like to refer to him as Yahweh Shai. That's where the faith in him makes him our advocate that will vouch for us if we slip. That's simple. 
You you had some. Uh, oh, nothing. Man. I was just gonna <laughs> say. I wonder if Eric Mason is uh thinks OJ did it or not. He, well, I know he does. I know he does. Well, he might not. Just he's woke church. He's he might church. Uh, I mean, gosh, man, it's these this John's epistles really really poke holes in the Christian doctrine heavily, severely. Um, let's go to uh Matthew nineteen and seventeen. This is Matthew chapter 19, verse 17. It says, And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? Mm -hmm. There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou was, <laughs> but if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Mm -hmm. Keep the commandments. If you want to enter into eternal life, keep the commandments. It's what he said. Red letter. I'm going to follow him. I'm sorry. I'm not going to follow you. Um, and Sorry, not sorry. Right? right. Revelations 14 and 12. Revelation 14 and 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God mm -hmm. and the faith that Yahweh shall. You see that? Keep the commandments and have the faith. That simple. Right? Now, Romans 8, 28 to 30 in conclusion. Because this is what it boils down to. They want to say sola fidelis, sola gratis, right? Which means uh, faith alone and grace alone, right? But this is really what it boils down to. All right? Sola lectis in the, in the Latin, right? Read that Romans 28 and, 30. And 28. and we know that all things work together for good to uh -huh. them that love God, right? To them who are the called, the what the called, the called, read on according to his purpose, uh -huh. according to the purpose of God, right? Keep going. God, it says, For whom he did foreknow, mm -hmm. he also did predestinate. He also did what predestinate, predestinate. There's people who are predestined, right? Read. Con, to be conformed to the image of his son, uh -huh. that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Uh -huh, keep going. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, uh -huh. them also he called. Uh -huh. It says, and whom he called, them also he justified. Uh -huh. So those who he's predestined are already justified. So who's going to be justified by Yahweh Shai? People who were predestinated. Meaning before they even existed to have faith and do works, they already were predetermined that they'd be justified. It's called predestination. So truthfully, it's not faith alone through grace alone through Christ alone. It's the elect alone. Those who are predestined to be the elect are going to be the elect and are going to be justified. And that's it without faith or works a before doing any good or evil. Right. right. Like it's yeah, same yeah. thing like Jacob and Esau, the election. Huh. So truthfully, it's all about who is the elect. And none of us even have power over who that is. Right. Right. There's nothing, no faith we can have or works we can do that can make us or not make us the elect. Who the elect are are going to have faith in Yahweh Shai and going to have works and not sin and keep the law as is written. Period. Right. right? Go ahead. It said he uh them all he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. See that? Boom. It's gonna reign with Yahweh Shai, right? That's an on 30. That's an on 30. Right, anything else you got? Yeah, it said uh because 28 and uh 29. And thirty, it's like this. The passage we just read mentioned, uh, for example, it says, um, "I'm gonna read verse twenty-eight again." And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. Huh? Well, Isaiah and, and it's a call the water, brother. It said to the called, right? Isaiah forty-eight and twelve. Hearken unto me, O Jacob and Israel, my called. <laughs> Oh man! I am he. I am the first. I am also the last. I don't like. Is, is, do I need to like? I don't need to exegete that. It's, it literally just says Israel and Jacob. It's, it's the call. So I mean, come on, man. Um, I also wanted to get one thing. We could be here all night, but I just wanted to read this. Um, because I'll just quote this one scripture real quick. It should say, um, if you seek to be justified by the works of the law, Christ died in vain. Why? Because as we've gone through the entire lesson, we've all fallen short. So we can't be justified by our own works because um, by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified. Why? Because uh, by the laws and knowledge of sin. The law shows us how sinful we are. That's why we need that intercessor, Yahweh Shai, to in him, in his righteousness, we are hey, made righteous we? with the most high. But I'm going to read this. Hey, Ephesians hey, 2. Mr. What oh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 2 and 8. And I know he was gonna go there. I have this is a beautiful scripture. That's the sad part. I hate I really hate when Christians I was I really hate when Christians read the Bible, kind of, because um well I'll say misquote the Bible rather, because um I knew where he was going, and he said if it says in Ephesians 2, uh, and I said under the mic verses 8, and he says, Yeah, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. 
which is uh, it's Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. It says, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. So we understand that we, because we've all fallen short, we have to have that gift. That's why nobody should boast. This is nothing to, to, uh, to brag about because we didn't uh, get this because of our own righteousness. We got this because of the righteousness of Yahweh and through his blood, right? Not of works, lest any man should boast. But notice, he's not going to read verse 10. Watch this. Read, read, let me read verse 10. For we are his workmanship created in Yahweh unto good works, which mm -hmm. God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Huh, what are the good works that God had before ordained that we should walk in? Let's go right back to it. Deuteronomy 11 and 22. For if ye shall diligently keep all these commandments, the Torah, which I command you to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways and to cleave unto him. So um, we understand we're saved by grace through faith and we shouldn't brag about it. It's a gift of the Most High God, but we're still supposed to keep the Torah That's right. at the end of the day. Um, but let me see. I mean, that's the point's been proven, so that's uh, that's it on that. Kind of, kind of. All right, we'll uh, we'll open for questions briefly. You have some questions, time probably about 15 minutes before we wrap up. Matter of fact, you know, before we do that, um, let's put a where am I? Put, a, put the emollient up real quick. You want to rise and face the east with us. We'll put up the Amalian prayer. <clears throat> All right. Uh Abanawi Yahweh. Abanawi Yahweh. Adawan Kutazayor. Adawan Kutazayor. Bahashima Mashiach Yahweh. Bahashim Mashiach Yahweh. Babusha, Babusha, Babusha. Babusha, Babusha, Babusha. Nabai Amalia. Nabai Amalia. Nabai Rab Amalia. Nabai Rab Amalia. Kutazayor the Kap. Kutazayor the Kap. Yam Yashai, Yam Yashai, Yasharala, Yasharala, Babusha, 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 Abanao Yahu, Abanao Yahu, Bashimu Mashak Yahusha, Bashimu Mashak Yahusha, the Wadamu, the Wadamu. So again, just so y'all understand what that prayer is, this is uh, pursuant to a, a verse in the Gospels when Yahweh said, Pray the Lord of the harvest that he send workers into the harvest, laborers rather, into the harvest. So it, uh, it, 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 in the English, it translates our Father Yahweh, Lord of the Lord of harvest. In the name of your anointed Yahweh Shai, please, please, please send laborers, send many laborers for the harvest. Hasten the day of salvation for Israel. Please, 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 our Father Yahweh, in the name of the anointed Yahweh Shai. Thank you, Amen. All right, but yeah, questions. I keep having these two visions. One, there's a bright light, so strong, one, shine out, so how? I'm telling my family to come with that. That's uh, back. The next is a guy on top of okay. It's your family trying to pull you back out of this truth and you trying to urge them in. Okay. Um, that's what that seems like. The next is a guy at the top of a building with a bright light shining down him, strong winds, dressed with a black fitted black shirt, red fringes. What does this mean? I, I don't know about that second one, but that first one seemed pretty clear. Uh, I need help dismantling first Timothy 3 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified <laughs> in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, uh, believed on in the world, received up into the world. Yeah, uh, God. Uh, th there's the problem. We know God um, from the Hebraic perspective is Elohim or Elohim, which is a plurality. Uh, it's, it's a reference to the, the powers, the angels, etc. So um, him doing that on the word God is him not being a Hebrew Israelite and him being an English Israelite. Um no, make us what we remember long. Uh that's the wrong question, King Tate Tay one K. The correct way to read the Bible is precept upon precept. Um, what are angels' duties in context also? What are angels' duties in today's generations? Don't worry about uh what an angel's duty is. That's that's really none of your concern. You missed a lot, Sky High Kid. I suggest you go back to the beginning. A lot of edification through the spirit of power. Of you, how about she? How was shy? Um, as a woman, should I bring the truth to my brother if he does not know? Why not? Uh, you got to understand. You got to be. You just have to be careful how you do it. Um, you just gotta introduce him to it. Not so much teach him it. Introduce him to it. Point him towards videos. Point him towards scripture, but don't so much teach him because you, he suffers not a woman to usurp authority over a man. Um, 
would like to learn some prayers in Hebrew. I mean, there's a lot of resources on them online. Our brothers just got videos. First Timothy two and three, uh, officer. Yeah, all it says is, but this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Okay, well, what is? Go to verse before. Um, verse four is what he wants. Who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth? <laughs> That's what you want. All men. Is that Joseph? <coughs> Uh, yeah, just, just type in Sakari Sabbath on, um, on YouTube, you know, the videos will pop up. How do you deal with your white mom? Cause I'm mixed. Uh, brother, um, um, I, I'll, I'll let us, I'll take that. <laughs> uh, reason being is I always hated white people. So it's not, um, it wasn't hard for me to deal with. You know, Hassan did as well, but it will go ahead. Yeah. Um, I mean, I just, just deal with your mom. Like, I don't know. It's really interesting. Like, I just deal he, with your mom. He, how he, you, no, he said, how did you deal? How I think, did I think I? dealing with the understanding that your mother was not going to make it. Um, I mean, like Alzar said, I always inherently knew. It's funny because I was thinking about it earlier. I remember I got into an argument. I just randomly thought about it. I remember I was in detention. Um. And you know what's cold is it wasn't even detention. For my first period, they just put me in the detention room. Yeah, they used to do things like that to me. Just then I asked them why. Like, why do I? <laughs> why no, I, like I just transferred to the school though. I'm saying, and so <laughs> you're in the ISS. I'm in. I'm in suspension. <laughs> and I'm in detention as my first period. So anyway, I remember I got to the teacher who was uh, over that little room into an argument because I, I remember a kid walked in with a G Caesar Borgia shirt on and I said that offended me because Jesus is black and I was like <laughs> beautiful 13 14 years old I couldn't prove it but I just knew it but anyway I always had a I always knew that um black as a as blacks so-called black people right? blacks <laughs> but I just hate that word blacks <laughs> but I use it because uh, just if, just in case somebody said know. somebody said Donald Trump wants to refer to us as the blacks. <laughs> <laughs> but I always knew as a so-called black man, right? That we were inherently better. And when I say when I say black, I mean all the tribes. Okay? Right. So-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans. We were just inherently superior to all races, especially the white race, right? So-called white race. So um it really didn't it didn't surprise me. Like a lot of brothers in the uh when they find out they're Israelite, they'll say, What about the white man? When I first heard about the truth, I said, damn, what about me? It, 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 my father's so-called black man, but my mother's not. As soon as I heard Numbers 118, I said, all right, perfect. Because I don't give a, I, I wanted them to be put to death anyway. That's right. I couldn't stand Esau in the world. I never liked them. So um, how did I deal with he's it? He's the devil. He's a, yeah, it was just, I was, see, this is what, um, and I want to say this, um, not to just, not brother, not just to you, but to anybody, not even who has, um, a, a, so a, a mother that's maybe not able to make it or a family member, maybe it'd be a family that member that doesn't believe instead of focusing on who isn't going to make it. Why don't you just f praise the highest that you have a chance and that love you have certain loved ones that will make it. Yeah. Stop being so emotional. Um, I'm going to say this. A lot of people, uh, you know, there's a, there's a video that a brother polite has of me. Um, a video meme, and a lot of people just couldn't believe it. And and the reason why people have such a hard time dealing with what I what I said on the video is because of how emotional they are. You got to stop being emotional. Um, give me Deuteronomy thirty three real quick. Yeah, yeah. on Levi. Yeah, I know it's coming. There you go. I mean, that, that, this is the way you got to be. All that, see, we earned the priesthood through this, right? The tribe of Levi. The rest of the tribes, y'all gotta y'all gotta take a note of this, right? So read. It's Deuteronomy thirty three and eight. And of Levi, he said, "Let thy thumb in thy urim be with thy holy one." Whom thou didst prove at Massa. Yeah, you can teach to a woman in the family, Melina. Right, go ahead. And with whom thou didst strive at the waters of Meribah, mm -hmm. who said unto his father and to his mother. Said to his parents, read. I have not seen him. I, I don't see you. What is that? You know what? Let's go to let's go to the Bible. That's, that's, what verse is that? 33 and 9. Nine, yeah. Right. Let's go to the let's go to the Bible. So it says, uh uh, it says I, he said, "This is this is a righteous thing in saying to Levi." He said of his father and mother, "I have no regard of them." He did not recognize his own brothers or acknowledge his own children, but he watched over your word and guarded your covenant. Meaning, it doesn't matter what relationship you are to me. If this, if you going off accord to this book, or this book says you damned to hell, or you know, so to speak, not true, not actually hell, but you're going to be judged, or you're going to be destroyed. Then guess what? That's what it's saying. This is how. This is the mentality we all need to come in. Uh, uh, NLT, 
the, the Levites obeyed your word and guarded your covenant. They were more loyal to you than their own parents. Ooh. So people mad at me. I'm a Levite. I'm going to be more loyal to this Torah, to Yahweh. I'm joined to Yahweh. I'm going to be more loyal to this than my own parents, right. to my own children, to any damn body. Right? That's how we got to be. This is the mentality that we need to take in. It said, who said of his father and mother? I regard him not. Right? Um, uh, where we go? Who's a, uh, uh, there's another version. Look, this is good. So the CEV protecting Israel's agreement with Yahweh was more important to you than the life of your father or mother or brothers or sister or your own children. Why? Because you may have to bring judgment on these people. You see that? So when I say what I said, um, what I was saying is morally. When he said, oh, so can you kill a white person? Yes. Is it basically, is it wrong? Is there morally an issue with killing a white person for a so-called black Hispanic or a native Indian to kill a white person? We're not dealing with whether or not it's wise or whether you should do it. We're, we were dealing with whether there was something morally wrong about it. I said, no. So can I kill your mother? Well, I mean, there's not an issue that morally, if, if I say you can kill any white person, it's not morally wrong for you to do it because of what they've done to us for 500 years and even prior to that. In other times, or the Greek time, the Roman time, even going back to the damn womb. But if I say there's not a moral issue with that, with you killing a white person, then you single the one white person out who's close to me and being my mother. Of course, I'm not going to say, oh, well, not her, but you know, anyone else. No, there's not nothing morally wrong. I'm not saying whether or not I will be hurt by it or whether it's the smart thing to do. I'm not telling you you should do it. All I'm saying is morally, because of all that they've done to us, they deserve it as a people. I'm not going to exclude any one of those people predicated upon my personal relationship with them. That's ridiculous. You see what I'm saying? So that's the mentality that you got to have, brother. But let's take a look at some of these other questions. Shantae, watch, rewatch the video. Yeah, Shantae, you got to rewatch the video, man, oh, from the top. He never said the laws are cursed. He said the curse of the law. The curse of the oh, is this Sean Tate? This the Christian. Oh, that's the Christian. Oh, this dude. Who's, who's the Christian? Yeah, he Sean never Tate? said the law. There's a curse in the law, brother. That's the one that said we're going into slavery on ships, dude. <laughs> who's Sean Tate? Yeah, he he's a Christian. I remember him. Uh, <laughs> no, the straight to heaven. Heaven is where you. Everyone goes to the same place when they die. The spirit realm. The spirit world. Right. Who wrote what's on the Las Lunas stone? The uh uh the tribe that either Gad or Issachar wrote that. Probably Gad, Gad, a lawgiver. Always would. Show one powerful officer of the Bible War. Yeah, big up to other uh, brother Tank. Somebody said, "What is the wind?" Hey man, uh, look, hey look, brother. Shalom. Right. <laughs> this is the way. Are you trying to confound us or something? Yeah, it could happen, Remy, but those that die will be uh, uh, raised at the um with uh Mashiach Yahushai's return. Few more minutes of questions. Go under, go under three minutes. Fair kind of eat him. I think I think he might be. Some people are saying that. I got to get verification. You see a dude from the nation that went by camp. Yeah, I seen him with the with the with the joint on. How do niggerians go about finding out if they're oh Nigerians? Oh, I thought I thought you were saying niggerians. Uh, it depends on what tribe they're from. Um. You know, to, uh, predominantly Igbo, Yoruba, Israelites. Um, the Hausa tribes are uh, Canaanites, which are the predominant people in Nigeria. But if they're Igbo or Yoruba, then they're Israel, more than likely. How do you get a Hebrew name? I mean, I, I would recommend that you ask, you know, somebody who you see as a leader who, you know, gives such things out. Yeah, don't have an Edomite my best friend, whatever you do. This is a non biblical racist teaching spreading hate. Nobody needs a spirit when they die. How big? Dario, um, <laughs> get your coon ass out of here. Thanks. 
he is a Christian. <laughs> He's clearly a Christian, Dario Jimenez. Vominos, Dario. <laughs> we in the two minutes now. Get your questions out. Get your questions out. Uh, depends on where you at, man. We all over the place. Oh, should do. I have one more question there. Some verses that say there is salvation for the Gentiles, but it also says the new covenant only for Israel. Shouldn't be confused. Gentiles is in reference to um, Israelites who have amalgamated into the cultures of other people. I suggest you watch, look, type in Sakari alienationism, the truth about the Gentiles. Type anything to that effect in uh, YouTube. You get the video with the full breakdown through the spirit on it. No, he's not talking about the curse of Deuteronomy 27 to 26. He's talking about the curse of Deuteronomy 28, uh, uh, 15 to 68. And that's confirmed in Revelation and uh, Deuteronomy 29 and 19. We've already went over that, Sean Tate. You're late, brother. Christian church has been defeated yet again through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahushua. And all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahushua. We already uh, uh, celebrated Purim last month. Yes, yeah, Sierra Leone. Uh, got tribes as well that are Israelites. Um, Alabama, I'm going to tell you right now, we in Atlanta, come down to Atlanta, mess with us in the A. I'm not going to Alabama. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going. Get the box. You want to go to Alabama? Uh, uh, hey, Shante, you're late and you've been destroyed. All of your arguments have been destroyed. So now you're gone. All right? Watch the video back and repent and leave that white man's religion. Gilbert, Ayash, Sakari San Francisco in the chat is in sack. Yeah, and he's staying in Sacramento. He'd be in um uh camp is in and it is in SF. Real quick. Somebody asked about Sierra Leone. I'm trying to uh Butterfly Beauty, we're in Atlanta. We got brothers in Atlanta. I just was in Atlanta two weeks in a row. Where was you at, Butterfly? But beauty, come on. All right. And in, in, uh, the Baca War and the Atlanta camp or at CNN Center every Saturday afternoon. Um, did I do it like this? Okay, so we have a few. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going I'm to I'm list off some, some African tribes that go back to Israel. Um, uh, the Mandy, the Fula. The Mandingo, the Jola, the Sanik, the Limba, not the Limba with an E that are in East Africa, Southeast Africa, the, the Limba with an I that are in West Africa, um, the Americo Liberians, the Basoga, and I believe the Gweri. Um, those would be Judites, uh, the Fonte and the Ga are Benjamites. Levi, you have um, the Wolof, the Fon, the Bakongo, the Ashanti, the Iwe, the Asia, the Bubi, the Limba that are in Southeast Africa with the E. Um, so you have that. What else you got? Um, the Yakoba tribe in Liberia, uh, the Igbo, the Songhai, the Yoruba. Uh, you know, so those are a few of the tribes in Africa who uh, are Israel. And that, those are pretty much the main ones. Any other ones I'm not familiar with being uh, Israelites, but especially in West Africa, that pretty much sums West Africa up. Tampa. Uh, they'd be in Ebor City. Just email us. Email us. We got uh, uh, Kwame Allah and um, Tawash. Is his brother name right? Tawash. Does that mean like brother out there in Tampa? So we got brother Tampa, Orlando, and MIA. All right. Well, yeah, with that, we're going to close up. We're going to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba Shai, and say Shalom. Shalom.